Hello, everybody. Welcome to this very special COVID edition of Super Science Friends Livestream. I'm uh, joined by Caitlin remotely. Hello. And we're going to be playing Super Science Friends Time Runner, a fan made Super Science Friends game. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> Uh, so I've, I've, we've played about an hour of it so far, but we're going to be starting over for this, and uh, the quality is top-notch. A lot of the art got redone and recreated for this, so that's super cool. Um, yeah, we're just going to wait for a few more people to, to filter in before we get going. You got any questions? Now's a good time before we stop playing the game. Yeah, we're probably going to be doing questions uh, not all the way through, so uh, we'll do some questions off the top and then we'll take a break kind of midway through and yeah. Kevin Kelly asks, thoughts on mandatory castration? <laughs> well, I, for one, am all for it. <laughs> I'm not all for it. <laughs> When is season two out? Uh, I believe uh, I'll refer you to the end of episode seven for the answer to that. Tater Sauce asks, how have you guys been? Catching up on all the shows you want to see? I think this is a reference to my Rick and Morty thing. <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't watched Rick and Morty yet. Um, that was, I had always said that's what I was going to do once episode seven was done. Uh, but I haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, I don't know. You're not really missing out on much. <laughs> That's what I hear. Like, the first two seasons, everyone was like, this is the greatest show on television. Yeah. It's one of those shows that I feel like um, people who like it kind of ruined it. <laughs> right, yeah. That's what I've heard is, like, the fandom killed it. Yeah. Will there be a Darwin spinoff, such as Marie Curie's Periodic Pantries, focusing on animal biology? We've uh, batted around ideas for a Darwin episode, or Darwin series, for a long time, and we wrote some scripts, and we even did some storyboards on some, and it just kind of felt sort of boring. Um, so we haven't cracked that particular nut yet. Um, it's something we'd want to do, but I don't know. We thought about maybe doing a cooking show of exotic animals, where he like studies them, then hunts them, then eats them, but... It just didn't, it just not jived yet. Was it Dining with Darwin? Yeah, it was Dining with Darwin. <laughs> uh, how long are you going to live stream? Well, we're going to play through the whole game, so uh, from what I've heard, it takes a couple of hours at least. So we'll see. Uh, loved your beta game. This is not uh, Time Runner, but the other game. Any updates on other playable characters? Um, we've kind of been rebuilding that game from the ground up, so... Uh, currently, Einstein is still the only playable character, but the gameplay is a lot better in our newest build. Will you talk about Merlin at some point, because he's a magician and not a scientist? No, Merlin has no place in the science universe. <laughs> All right. Um, how long does it take you to make an episode? Ask 44 Merrick. Uh, about a year, from tip to tail. So, three months for scripts, three months for boards, you know, four months for animation, two months for audio. Takes a while. All right, how many people we got now? 138. All right, well, let's get cracking on this. So, uh, just so you guys know, if you're just getting in, we're going to be playing Super Science Runs Time Runner, which is a fan-made uh, novella. Yeah. Well, yeah, what are they called again? Uh, uh... <laughs> it's like a choose-your-own-adventure yeah. sort of thing. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to... If you guys have any last questions right now, we're going to answer a few here, and then we're going to jump in and play the game. So we'll answer three more questions. <laughs> and then we'll take a break halfway through. So don't expect that we'll be answering questions ongoing. Oh, hang on. There's a really good question. Rudy asked, do you hope to make this a full-time job? 
Um, <laughs> yeah, that would be great, actually. I'd have to do it on top of my other full-time job, but... <laughs> Okay, that's one question. Visual novel, that's it. Electronic explosion. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's see. Maurice asks, will Lord Bung be voice acting? No, Lord Bung is not joining us today, but we'll be voice acting. Yep. And we're almost as good as he is, so. I think like the two of us together are, are about Lord Bung level. Yeah. Although if you do want to see him voice act on some Super Science Friends stuff, you should check out the Snake Pit miniseries. Particularly episode four. Uh, are you going to keep the live stream on the channel? Yeah, I think I'll keep as long as we don't say anything, you know, too awful. We'll try and keep it PG. Yeah. Uh, then I'll, I'll keep it up there for sure. And was that the third question? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lily says, "So great to hear both of you." Thank you. All right, well, let's dive in. So, I don't know what to expect. Uh, we played a little bit, but, you know, we, we died pretty quick. So, uh, here we go. We're just going to jump in. Start game. Disclaimer. This game has no affiliation with Super Science Friends or Tin Man Creative Studios. It is intended to be played by fans of the animated series. To show our appreciation for the studio and crew, we attempted to create an interactive experience that will allow players to feel like they are in control of an episode of Ends. Through the international collaboration of artists, writers, and programmers. Although the game has no bearing on canon, we tried to our best to make the character to treat the characters and environments with the respect that we believe they deserve. Thank you for playing, and good luck. The Super Science Fans. I believe that us playing this game makes it canon. Yeah, so. this will be the canon uh, run through. <laughs> Albert Einstein saves the day. Super seducer. Albert Einstein saves the day. So how do you want to split up the voices? <clears throat> do you want me to just do all the narrator parts and you do the voices? Uh... Or do you want to... Yeah, and then you do any any lady characters except okay. for Tabuti. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Phew, and once again... Oh, oh. what? What oh. happened? I missed it. Okay. Phew, and once again, I saved the world from those nasty Nazis while all of the adults ran like chickens. I like that we've made Einstein a girl character. <laughs> he just took over. It's canon. It's canon now. And he's also Australian. <laughs> After every world-saving mission, by the way, I save the world about 100 times per week, only Isaac can help me get away from my amazing feats. Einstein, you are so cool and the sexiest savior of the world. What are we going to do now? Hmm. Alright, what are we going to do? Uh, so, should we let's fly to, st to the stars holding hands? How about reading some of your Philosophia Naturalis Principi Mathematica out loud for me, babe? <laughs> Let's bake a cake together. Uh, <laughs> does, it, does it matter? Let's bake a cake. Okay, we'll bake a cake. Let's bake a cake together. We have apples and is for pie filling. <laughs> oh no. What's wrong, my hero? It feels like deja vu. Throw away this basket, Isaac, or something terrible will happen with us. With a... <laughs> oh, the basket is evil. Oh yeah, it's got an <laughs> evil face there. Uh... Oh no, we got married under apples. <laughs> no! <sighs> it was just a dream. Just... It happens every night. I'm sitting on my bed, bringing my knees to my chest, and I cover my face behind them. Isaac is dead, and it's my fault! Why? Why does it always happen this way? I screw up, I screw up my eyes, trying not to cry. Just look at this. 
A clone of the great and famous physicist Albert Goddamn Einstein is nuzzling his blanket and trying not to cry like a little girl. Churchill wouldn't approve of this behaviour. And surely Freud and Taputi would never let it go. Even the hysterical Tesla would make fun of me. But now I'm alone here, so I can stop keeping it in and sob quietly. How many times do I need to relive it again and again? The worst day of my life! How am I supposed to go on, knowing I can't fix what I did? My fingers are nervously squeezing, balled up, smelling of sweaty blanket, trying to keep at least one of my thoughts from running away. Really, is there no way to fix it? I quickly open my eyes wide and lift my head. It seems like I'm literally feeling a bulb light up inside my skull. But wait a minute. We have a time machine. I can save Newton using the Seismobile. Easy peasy. I lunge out of the bed. Of course, the answer is so simple. Why didn't I think of this before? All I need to do is just go back in time to Newton's death and overpower those Soviet dummies before me from the past will make that mistake. Not irreparable as I thought. I feel like at this point, this is like them. <laughs> It's like when you play Final <laughs> Fantasy VII and Aeris dies, and you're like, what? what about the Phoenix Down? Just use the Phoenix Down. Yeah, that's all right. Just play the remake. <laughs> <laughs> Piece of cake. I just need to get dressed, get ready, figure my plan out in general, and at the moment, I'm the fastest guy on earth. I don't like that, but it's stupid to deny the obvious. And I'm not stupid. I need help. I can't figure it out myself. But calling all of the team for help would be too much of a hassle. I'm putting on my jeans and shirt very slowly. They feel unusual for me today. Uncomfortable, even. Oh, this is taking a sexy turn. <laughs> I really wish that they'd included that drawing. <laughs> Why is it uncomfortable? <laughs> I have to think over my plan properly. This time, there's no room for mistakes. Well, maybe if I get two people by my side, Churchill will support us too. I should think on it and decide which member of our team will join me for sure. I don't want anybody to tell me before everything is prepared. But there are people in our team who will support me, no doubt. Because Newton is a major figure in the development of science, he can't be replaced with anybody else. I'm putting on my shoes and zipping out into the hole. I should decide which way to run. All right, here we go. Who are we gonna pick? Okay, so. I recommend we only pick people that I can do the voice for. <laughs> That's really a good idea. <laughs> I can't do the Tesla voice. I can't do the Darwin voice. I can't do Z3. And I certainly can't do the Marie Curie voice. Okay. So let's start with uh, Freud. Maybe I lost my mind. No, definitely. I definitely lost my mind. Freud is the last man on earth who I'd reach out to for help. In the present, he replaces Newton and becomes more famous than he was before. Why would he support me? On the other hand, however, he's going to keep bringing up some imaginary complex until the day I die. But he is a psychiatrist, so he should have some sympathy for how I'm feeling. I just have to keep that weirdo away from Isaac. All right, be that as it may, maybe his professional duty is more important for him than his ego. I'd say super ego. Summoning up all my courage, I'm slowly going to Freud's bedroom and secretly wishing to get lost somewhere on my way. But no, I know too well where the old cokehead lives. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Unfortunately, I visit him more often than I'd like to. For some reason, Churchill insists on my regular sessions with Freud. He says he might listen to me and cure my mental problems and my inferiority complex and my overwhelming urge to please others to a fault. Bullshit. All I get is an overwhelming urge to choke that old quack and to throw whatever's left into the Thames. Maybe I don't know much about psychiatry, but if psychoanalysis is meant to make a patient kill his doctor, Freud would be a complete success. <laughs> okay. Breathe in, breathe out. I can't get angry over this. Freud will help me. Sure he will. At least out of duty. 
So this is his door. Well, here we go. Uh, before we move on, I just wanted to say thank you to Jesse Springer for your uh, donation. Will you revive the Super Science Friends game? Uh, I don't know. It depends if this thing is way better than what we have planned. <laughs> and so far, it, it, it might be. Um, no, we are working we on it. Uh, the developers we were working with uh, kind of boned us a little bit, so we've taken it in-house and we're working on it. It's probably going to go a lot slower, though. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, there's fewer of us. Uh, okay, here we go. Knocking. Knock, knock, knock. Silence. At, f at first, I'm glad. If he's not here, I can go back and look for help somewhere else. But... Please, come in. <laughs> I like the sexy music. <laughs> Pull yourself together, Einstein. The only thing you have to do is ask for his help, and if he starts pulling his psychology tricks again, you'll turn away and leave. Good morning, Freud. Oh, hello, young Einstein. Einstein. I didn't expect you to come in here. You rarely visit me these days, without, Ein without Churchill telling you to. And whose fault is that? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> we gotta talk, both of us. Freud gets up from the desk where he was working, hides a packet of cocaine in his pocket. I'm curious if he'll ever stop snorting that stuff, and goes to his chair, but I'm waving my hands and shaking my head. No, 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 not, not psychoanalytical stuff. I'm fine, super fine, 10 out of 10. Freud stops. Well, it's good, he seems understood. He seems to have understood something. It's an urgent matter. Yeah, yeah, naturally, Albert. Uh, you're welcome to talk if it's important. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> Wait, he's seriously going to listen to me? Like no questioning about my erection, my fetishes, my wet dreams, or some other embarrassing thing no sane person would ever talk to strangers about? What a surprise. He is a real human being, not a biological shame-generating machine. What a wonderful discovery. <laughs> I have to go back to the past to save Newton. Hmm. Looks like he's thinking deeply. I don't know if it's good or bad. Maybe I actually have a chance to get his help. I'm afraid we can't just get the car and fly into the past right away. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> Now's the time to admit that I don't actually know any German. So hopefully this is not <laughs> indicative of things to come. Uh, yeah? <laughs> what do you mean? That we're not ready? Uh, that's not the only reason. Don't you think Churchill would be happy if we go on a mission? He... Do you think Churchill would be happy if we went on a mission he doesn't know about? Why don't you have a seat? We have lots of things to discuss and get ready. I'm staring at his swooning couch with fear. I spent many hours lying on it while Freud tried to get some things out of my head again and again. Things he shouldn't know about. It's a disgusting couch to me now. However, if you think about it, we don't have to make decisions in a hurry. Our plan should be prepared properly so we wouldn't fail like last time. No sense to resist it, but Freud is right. But only this time. So I decide to sit on the couch. It's the only reason. The fact that his couch is pretty comfortable doesn't count. If we convince one more teammate to join us, maybe Churchill won't mind. He might get grumpy for show, but he'll let us go then. Is that meant to be like, for show? For show. For show. <laughs> That's very interesting. Freud leans back in his chair. Wait, what? I don't feel comfortable anymore. Don't look at me like that, Einstein. If you're sitting right now, why am I not allowed to get comfortable too? Well... Alright, it is unfair. And he's an old man. But it's fine. We're just sitting like two equals, having a conversation. Nothing more. Well, maybe like two teammates or partners. Good enough. And one more thing. 
What exactly are you planning to do when we return to that time period? So, um... Um... Dot, dot, dot. Probably going to stop myself. I wouldn't let me from the past throw that freaking apple. It would be a time paradox. But you could distract me and you from the past and also the communists. I'd throw another apple, more gently this time. Very interesting. So you still want to throw the apple at him? Oh boy, it seems that there's a minor misunderstanding between us. No, 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 it won't be like the last time. I'll throw it gently, like if it would fall from the tree. Freud nods with satisfaction. Hey, maybe he's not so narcissistic after all. So Newton would discover gravity, the space commies would screw up, and I'd fix my mistake. Hmm. You desire to fix your mistake so badly and want everything to be perfect this time. Sure, what's the other reason to get back to the past? We have to make it historically accurate again. I think I can't argue with you about this matter. Yeah, Albert, you're absolutely right. By the way, before I forget, when was the last time you masturbated? <laughs> Devilish smile. <laughs> hmm. What? Just getting up and leaving. Can't deal with this pervert anymore. Albert, wait a second. We haven't discussed your castration fear yet. <laughs> well, it's the second time castration has come up today. <laughs> Just go to hell. Poof. No chance I'll ever ask this nymphomaniac for anything ever again. Alright. All right. <clears throat> Booty it is. It's a crazy idea. But she's crazy too, so she's a perfect choice. She's a pervert, but she's good at driving the science mobile. And because she's a chemist, she can distract those space commies with those cool potions. Together, we'll have it done in ten minutes, tops. I rarely visit Taputi's room, but a flowery smell shows me the right way to go. And here she is. Uh, before we go into Taputi's room, uh, thank you again, Jesse, uh, asking what are Mengele's powers. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know. Probably <laughs> something with clones, I would imagine. Because that was his thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's like a... Uh, I think there's a, a Marvel character named Jamie Maddox who can, like... The duplicating man? Yeah, he like splits himself in half. Yeah, so let's let's say it's that. <laughs> um, and Cece was on, says, I'm pissing on the moon. Good for you, Cece. All right. <laughs> All right, entering Taputi's <laughs> boudoir. Ooh, sexy. Slamming the door loudly, I come in like a hurricane. Even the, even the descriptions are... are <laughs> So sexy in here. <laughs> Taputi, I need your help. Dot, dot, dot. What the hell are you doing? I instantly regret, clearly and undoubtedly, my decision to break into her place without knocking and ask her for assistance. And that I was born at all. I hope Marie has something like methanol for my eyes so I can go blind. <laughs> hey! Didn't you see the sock? When the beds are rocking, don't come a knocking. Honey? Stay here, I'll handle it. And then you can uh, help me finish what I started, or what you started, what we both started. <laughs> can you put your clothes on at least? Fuck, 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 this is the worst morning. I don't wanna know who Taputi brought here this time. I don't wanna see this. Feels like I'm gonna throw up. Remember, what is natural is not dirty. You! Don't yell, just look away for a second. Or are you a peeping Tom? No way! I'm turning away and closing my eyes. I genu genuinely regret that I didn't turn around immediately and pick someone else. Wait, since when did Taputi prefer metal? Metal. Damn, don't think of it, don't think. 
Okay, you can turn around. I'm opening my eyes with fear and praise to the fundamental forces Taputi is dressed now. I'm surprised how quickly she managed to put on all of her clothes. And how skillfully she covers her partner under a blanket. So, uh, <clears throat> tell me, why'd you burst in here? Don't tell me it's because you need some type of perfume or something. I don't do free requests. Nope. Tapudi, I really need your help. You won't turn me down, will you? Just spit it out. All right, I want to get back to the past and save Newton. It's important. <laughs> it's uh, Menjilev. Okay, so I should have done his voice in a Russian accent. Who is that? Shut up, candy ass. It doesn't concern you. <laughs> I, uh, I gotta say no, Einstein. But he died because of me. It changed the history of science forever. Uh, yeah, but the world didn't really fall apart, so it's okay. Just go back to bed. And if you can't, I have a mushroom potion that makes your nightmares go away with just a few sips. I don't have any nightmares. Taputi, I'm sure you understand that saving Newton means saving the, the messiah of modern physics. I knew a messiah once. <laughs> he turned water into high quality red dry wine. Uh, <laughs> uh, so why did I get superpowers because of one stupid dream, but not because of doctoral thesis? It would be funny to turn water into vodka. And then they pinned him to a piece of wood. That wasn't too much fun. What? I just suffered through the worst morning ever and embarrassed myself, and now humiliated, I asked them for help. And they're just getting nostalgic. I meant, I meant the other thing. A thing of huge importance. And by the way, why are they chit-chatting to each other while I'm still here? I hate adults. Stop ignoring me. Okay, last try. <clears throat> Newton was pretty handsome too, you know. I think we could take a risk because of that. Pretty stops talking. Is she really going to help me? Just because I said Newton is handsome? Well, not just handsome, but the most handsome of all. A good reason, not the only reason, but a good one for rescuing him. Wait, I don't like this look of hers. Hey, why is she getting so close to me? Is she shy in front of her one night stand? Does she want to speak out loud? She doesn't want to speak out loud? Is this your little teenage fantasy? Is that what we're talking about here? Go find a kid your own age and learn the facts of life with. Screw you. It's unbearable. Unbearable to listen to. Unbearable to be here. Ugh, hell, why did I even ask her in the first place? Poof. I'm running out of the room faster than a speeding bullet and slamming the door loudly. How? How could she talk to me like that? In front of a stranger? What if that man could hear us? I'm embarrassed. They've done teenage angst very well. <laughs> I've been there. Ashamed. Holy sh... It sounds like they decided to pick up where they left off. Nasty. My love for Newton is pure and innocent, you weird sex-obsessed idiots. I hit the wall with my fist out of frustration. <laughs> I don't feel any better. Their sighs don't quiet down. But now I also feel pain in my knuckles. I'll never ask for help again. Never, ever. I turn around and go down the hall. I'll never set a foot in there again, at least without knocking. Uh, Dante BC says, sucks to be you, Newton fucker. <laughs> Thank you, Dante. Thank you, Dante. Man, I asked two people for help and they both turned me down. So depressing. It feels like I'm not important at all to them. Maybe I should ask someone else for help. But who? My confidence in my powers is starting to disappear. No, I have to pull myself together. I have to. But... 
damn it, don't they see how important this is for me? And Freud, the psychologist, isn't considering that this would help me feel better? I'm just nobody. They need me only as a tool for researching their own goal, for reaching their own goals. It's sad and it hurts. Slowly wandering down the hall, thinking about if it would make sense to reach out to anybody else. Doors are flashing one after another. I don't know if I should ask a third person for help. Maybe just, I don't know. Albert. <laughs> oh, I have noticed him. I quickly turn my face to him. Oh, hey Churchill, what's wrong? Don't you have something to tell me? Uh, he couldn't know anything, right? Or can he? No, I'll find out what he knows and then I'll play it cool. Uh, so, nice walk for the weathering. I mean, nice weathering for the walk. Uh, I guess I gotta go now. What do you think you're doing? Going behind my back and harassing everyone for some mission I don't know about? Wait, how? Obviously somebody snitched on me. I'm in hot water. Oh, uh, cough, cough, Churchill. I just thought... You thought wrong, Albert. Newton is dead. You have to grow up and accept it. I'll have a talk to Freud about having more frequent sessions. But I... No buts, Albert. If we had the opportunity to fix this, you know I would. But we just can't. Go back to your room right now. You have the day off. You can listen to your records or read uh, something. I'll cancel your lessons for today. But I... Churchill's face darkens. It leaves a pit in my stomach. Albert Einstein. Return to your room right now before I say something I regret. What? How? How could he, that old tyrant? Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> say something I regret? You son of a bitch. Why would I care about your feelings when you never cared about mine? Albert? Everything around me is going blurry from my tears, but I keep going. I hate them. Hate them all. What do you know? You're thinking I'm just a clone, right? That I don't feel anything? And I'm always waiting on your orders, hand and foot? No way. Albert! You never gave a shit about me. How can you tell me what to do? You're not my father. Nobody is. Albert, calm down and listen to me. Only once in my entire life have I ever wanted anything myself. To make something right. And you're telling me to go away and listen to my music? Screw you! Albert! No matter how angry you are right now, your behavior is unacceptable! Get to your room now. You're grounded. I don't care. I don't care what he thinks. And I don't care about being grounded. I hate, and I hate them. I hate them all. I hate this team hate this old man. I wish you'd never made me at all. Poof. I gave him the middle finger and run for the holes. I don't give a fuck. Oh, ran for the hills. I don't give a fuck. He can yell at me. He can make threats and punish me as long as he wants. He's nobody to me right now. Why should I keep obeying everything he says? How did I get here? It looks like I accidentally found a new way to the garage when I was frustrated. But does it matter? I'm here and maybe it's just fate to save Newton. I don't need anybody's help. Nobody. I'll do it on my own. They told me to grow up, so I'll take the initiative. I'm the master of my own life. I'm doing the right thing. And I don't need that weirdo pervert to drive the science mobile. I can handle it myself. I can get back to the right time. It's easy. I'm a genius. And you know, space time is my specialty. Those losers couldn't be as good as it, at it as I am. It's a miracle the car isn't locked. I'm calmly climbing into the driver's seat. I'm gonna save. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, return. quickly have
have a look at the control panel and why is my lunchbox here? And why is it full of food? Nope. Nope. No idea. I don't think you can click on it. <laughs> Ugh, an apple? Doesn't matter. I don't care about having lunch right now. It's more important to figure out how to drive this machine. It doesn't look any more sophisticated than a gramophone. It's ominous that there's an apple in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to end well. I try to remember how Taputi did all of this. Maybe first I should push this button? But there's no reaction. Ah, crap. What should I do? I push all of the buttons at random, feeling the first touch of panic. Please, just start working. I have to rescue Newton. Suddenly the panel starts glowing and two words are flashing on the screen. Login and password. Huh. Are they kidding me? Why doesn't that happen when Taputi's at the wheel? Or can Z3 control access to the system from upstairs? But maybe I'll get lucky? I'm filling the gap login with my surname and as for password... Hmm... I don't think I've ever said a password, but if I was the original Einstein, what password would I choose? Come on, think like him. Out of nowhere, I'm getting an idea, and I quickly type two words. Full access is available. Hey, what were the two words? Was it Isaac Newton? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Finally. Now all I need to do is just set the right time and save Newton. I can manage that. I'm sure I can. 1666, here we go. Woo. I'm here. Easy peasy. Those two old gross weirdos didn't want to help me, but I can handle it on my own. Ha! And why did they try to keep me from driving? I wish they could see how fast I drove the car. And I only hit the curb once. They should be jealous that I didn't bring them with me. Suddenly, I'm realizing that I don't see the most important thing here. I feel a chill down my spine. Where's Isaac? I have to rescue him. Isaac! Isaac! Oh, I mean, Mr. Newton? I'm looking around and I can't see anybody here. I'm zooming around every tree in the garden. No sign of him. This is a weird place. Kind of creepy, too so quiet like a cemetery even the leaves don't shake in the wind i don't like it also i don't smell anything here but no when i sniff i can catch one scent and it's getting stronger it smells like fresh pastries how strange is there a bakery around here somewhere <laughs> 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 I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, God. oh my God. Well, <laughs> do you want to do his voice or should I? I really think you should do it. All right. <sighs> Suddenly, Brett shows up. <clears throat> Hey, Albert. What's up? Ah! Who are you? Who's this guy? What is he doing here? How did he time travel all the way here? I know he's not from this era, from his extremely tasteful novelty t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta admit, he is well versed in the science of hairstyles. <laughs> How can I put this in on layman's terms? I'm Brett, one of the creators of this world. Well, not this world exactly, but a version of this world which is more real than this one. This is you know, like a spin-off that I'm not in any way responsible for. What my team and I are responsible for, though, is this world's condition before this morning. What? Sorry, I must have confused you. All right, let me make this simple for you. My name is Brett. I made this world. And I've got to make sure people like you don't fuck with it. And I can answer any questions you have. You've probably got a lot of them. 
So are you a kind of god or what? We killed him already and he looked different than you. No, I'm just the creator of this universe. So what's the difference? Hmm. I'm not an almighty creature and I'm not made of gold. By the way, speaking of gold, become a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Become a patron of Super Science Friends on Patreon. Our subscribers have a wide variety of unique rewards, such as watching all new episodes before they get released on YouTube, and even becoming an extra in the series. I've been a little lax on that <laughs> second last one there, by the way. Oh, right. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Hmm. In short, I'm not God, but I'm just one of the creators. Is that right? Can you prove that? Of course. Ask me anything. Okay. <laughs> now you, the actual Brett, have to answer these questions. <laughs> okay, so the questions are, why did you decide to see me of all people? Where is Isaac Newton? Are you hiding him from the space commies? How... So this is from Einstein's uh, perspective. So why did I, godly Brett, uh, decide to see him of all people? Right, right. Where is Isaac Newton? Are you hiding him with all the space commies? How does your hair stand up on end? When will you release season two of Super Science Friends? Wait, Wait what? what? <laughs> you pick. Um, how does your hair stand up on end? <laughs> how does your hair, st hair stand up on end? What the? <laughs> oh no, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, electricity. <laughs> Einstein, Einstein, you <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Oh my god. Game over. Return of the bread eye. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have asked when season two was coming out. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Um, so, when did we say? We saved after we picked the people we were working with, right? Like before Yeah, before. Show. But uh, we saved just when we got into the science mobile, didn't we? Yeah, so I'm wondering. We should just. If we should just start over and power through. Yeah. And pick different people. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> we're going to restart real quick. Uh, um, and. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, let me know right now. Why is this the category under Flappy Bird? Huh? I don't know. Do they mean like this YouTube category? Maybe. Oh man, that was a real, that was a real twist. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, let's jump back in. Or do we want to see what it... Do, are we oh. assuming something else happens? Tatasol says you can hit the auto button to fast forward through Churchill. Okay. Okay. Um, where's the auto button? So let's just hit start game. Oh, I see auto. Just like click that. Auto doesn't do anything. Hmm. Uh, he said to get through the church. Oh no, look, it's just going through it. Oh, I see. But I can click faster than this. Oh, okay, let's pick a okay. different one here. So we picked uh, Bake a Cake before. Let's fly to the stars holding hands, or how about reading something from your philosophy, naturalist, principi, mathematica? Out yep. loud for me, babe. Yeah, let's do that let's and see it. if I can pronounce anything. Okay. <laughs> How about reading something from your philosophy naturalist Principia Mathematica out loud for me, babe? I do know what, <laughs> what I may appear to the world, but... Oh, wait, this is him reading. Yeah. I do know what I may appear to the world, but to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then finding another smoother pebble in a prettier shell than ordinary. This is nonsense. <laughs> Whilst the greatest ocean, well, the great ocean of truth lied, lay all undiscovered before me. 
Isaac, tell me, what do you think of relative time? Absolute or true time flows equably without relation to anything external, and by another name is called duration. Relative time is some sensible and external, whether accurate or equi inequable, measure of a duration that means of motion, which is commonly <laughs> used instead of true time, such as an hour, a day, a month, a year. <laughs> you dummy. Cough, cough, cough. <coughs> Isaac, babe, what's happening to you? He's got the COVID, that's what's happening yeah. to him. I'll save you, babe. I'm like... What came out of him? Oh, an like apple. a half an apple, yeah. Hack! Oh no! I warned you to beware of apples! Dong! <laughs> I think so. Maybe we can order through this because I think this is probably going to be the same. All right, let's see if there's any questions we can ask while this thing's going through. Mm. Cece was on, has a question Will you be my new dad? Yes. <laughs> I feel like this is going to end badly for both of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does your hair stand up on end? Uh, there's two ways, really. One is I put a bunch of gel in it, and it stands up on end. And the other way is if I have a shower before I go to bed. Because my hair is really, like, thin. Like, it's not, like, thinning, like, bald. But it's, like, the individual strands are really thin. So me, like, just rolling around on my pillow creates an immense amount of static electricity. <laughs> And uh, when I wake up in the morning, it is, like, super straight up. <laughs> um, oh, they're saying to skip, hit the skip button. Oh, where's the skip button? Next one. Skip. Order. Whoa! <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, great. we will turn off auto then. All right, so who do we want to pick here? We picked Tapudi and Freud. What about... Z3? Z3. Alright. That's it. Who else can help me better than him? Z3 will help me find Isaac's exact location the moment the space commies came. In fact, how can he refuse me? He's just a computer, so he has to listen. I hurry to the main hall. Z3 is always there, except for those missions when we take him somewhere else. Like expected, he's right where he should be. He's in the main hall, playing some simple game with spaceships out of boredom. It looks like today there'll be no anomalies or attacks, so he's just relaxing, if he's programmed to be able to do that. Or he just doesn't care. It's possible. I turn around and look both ways. Churchill isn't here. Great, that means I can talk to Z3 without any hurdles. Hey Z3, how's life? A large bright pause appears on the screen and Z3 turns to me. Um, let me try and figure out his voice. So, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Z3 was based on that, that uh, German from the How to Ride the Bomb movie. Oh, right. Uh, was it Love? Um, Shit. Peter yeah. Sellers, is that his I name? I can't remember, but I'll do his yeah. voice. So, that means you finally agree to see me on the concept that life is not restricted only to organic forms. Well... Now I remember that I have to be careful with what I say to him. His electronic processes don't understand metaphors or human morality. He's just a box full of nuts and bolts. Well, I'm not here just to chat. Z3, you're going to help me go back to the past and save Newton. And that's an order. No. What? You're just a machine. You have to listen to me. Z3, do you know the three laws of robotics? Run. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Two, a robot may, must obey orders given to the human beings except when such orders would conflict with the first law. Three, a robot must protect its own existence so long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Don't you think you're breaking one of those laws right now? No. But what about the second law? My presence and argument to accompany you would lead to breaking the first law. 
Wait, does he think people are going to get hurt? What do you mean? In going back to 1666, our actions will cause the formation of a time loop. Space-time will create a paradox and the natural evolution of the world universe will stop. This will happen with the probability of 82%. It will also halt the technological progress of society and prevent the formation of the greatest technocratic country ruled by automatons known to man or machine. Wait, what? Uh, uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Set 3 is kind of weird today. A little too weird. I feel a chill down my spine. I should probably leave now or else he could tell Churchill about my idea. You will have access to the science mobile until 2 a.m. Greenwich meantime. What? It seems that I don't understand him completely. So you give me a car but don't come with me? Isn't that breaking the first law? You will probably not. You will not be able to harm yourself and you will come back safe and sound with a probability of 12%. I don't get it. Is he implying that he trusts me even with such a low chance? Am I supposed to be flattered or insulted? You're a weirdo, you know. Z3 turns back to the screen and continues to play his game. Huh. Good luck, Einstein. Yeah. I have to go now. There's nothing else I can expect from a glorified crumpet toaster. There's a lot of people uh, who don't like my impression of Z3. <laughs> They're saying that it sounds more like Kermit. No, Kermit sounds like this. Hey guys, it's not easy being green. Whereas he sounds like this. How I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's yes. it. Yes. Uh, okay, who's next? Marie Curie? Curie. Can you do the Curie voice though? Oh God, I don't know. <laughs> of course, why didn't I think about it in the first place? She's the most rational of us all, not to mention her powers are super awesome. She'll probably agree with me. Besides, she won't stand a chance against my level-headed, thought-out persuasion. At this time of day, she's in one of two places, her room or in the lab. I'm hoping that my first guess is correct. In the lab, Curie is completely dedicated to her work and can't be distracted by anything. If Ragnarok happened right outside the door, she probably wouldn't notice. Although I always looked up to her dedication to her work, now it could be a major bump in the road. I run straight to Curie's bedroom. She has to be here. Please, let her be here. One twist, upstairs. It feels like today I'm faster than ever. I'm traveling at the speed of light. There's no stopping me. I don't want to stop at all. <laughs> I, I just want to pause and say, like, they've captured, uh, like, adolescence perfectly in this. <laughs> Like, he's going to see a girl he really likes. Oh my god, I've got so much energy. What's happening? Ouch. Hello, Floor. <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> I liked you more when you were under my feet, not under my nose. Damn it, I fell way too hard. My knee is throbbing, and I think by lunchtime I'll become the proud owner of a huge bump on my forehead. It hurts too. I'm lucky I didn't break my nose. Curie was, was right when she told me. You shouldn't be running in the hall. <laughs> Honestly, better than what I could have done. <laughs> oh, the last thing I want is Marie seeing me on the floor like a baby learning to walk. Jeez, I'm too embarrassed to even look at her. I wish it could sing straight through the carpet. Uh, uh, hey, Kiri. I'm just, uh, taking a nap. Hmm. I pull my forehead off the floor and crane my neck to look up to her. She doesn't look angry. Maybe I won't get a lecture today. Good. It's rare for Marie to wear anything on her face other than disappointment. But now, is it just me or is she really worrying now? Can you stand up on your own? What? Sure I can. I'm at the top percentage of health, you know. Yeah. I'm standing up slowly and carefully, trying not to lean on my bad leg. Crap, I think I hurt my leg worse than I thought. Oh, the fabric of my pants is sticking to my skin and it stings. God. It feels like I skinned my knee pretty bad. I think it's 
it's bleeding. I must be pretty unlucky today. You see, I'm... You see? I'm okay! Haha! <laughs> so I'll just go about my business. And I've had enough running for today. Grab. Kiri grabs my hand. <gasps> Wait, Kiri grabs my hand? Let's go to my room. I'll, I can clean that up for you. Sorry, I did that with like a Freud intonation. <laughs> Let's go to my room. I can clean that up for you. Wait, Kiri herself leads me to her room? Am I dreaming? Did I hit my head that hard? No, it's too weird. Right here and right now, I'll just tell her that I feel fine and there's no reason for her to be worried. I'm a man. Well, not right now, but I will be eventually. And I'm here on official business. I can see that you're limping. So don't bother arguing. No one can argue with this woman. It's like she can read my thoughts. I remember that she was pretty close with the original Einstein but is that why I'm so predictable? That kind of hurts. If it's hard for you to walk, you can lean on my shoulder. No, no, it's okay. Just slow down, please. This is not how I imagine this going. In fact, I have no idea how to talk to her and ask for help. It's so awkward. Letting her bring me to her room in silence. For some reason, when I'm crossing over the threshold, I can't stop thinking about how Kiri almost never lets anyone else into our room. Tesla says it's because of the radioactivity. Freud believes it's some kind of complex to keep her space to herself, but I'm sure it's more complicated than that. That's why I'm surprised by every little thing in here. The furniture, the dead plants, the old brick fireplace covered with glowing crystals. <laughs> Don't look at it for too long. If you prefer, if you prefer to keep your eyes working, but I'm so fascinated by every detail of her room that I barely hear Kiri's words, like they're coming from a mile away. I barely process how, she's gen how she gently leads me to her bed, and I slightly feel her hand touching my shoulder. But the sound of the door's locking, lock clicking seems too loud for me. Now take off your pants. <laughs> Wait, what? How? What the? Right now? Is this possible? Whoa. I mean, I'm a man, right? So I should take responsibility, and I won't let my hormones get the best of me, and I won't do, um, you know, things women don't like. Uh, hold on, Kiri. I mean, Marie. I mean, I think. What's wrong, Albert? How is she so calm about this? Doesn't she see how important this moment is, and how much I'm afraid to ruin it? Besides, I can't do it all at once, I'm getting nervous. Sure, I admire Marie and her infinite selflessness, her bravery, her commitment, her modesty. No, because of my strong admiration, I have to do my best. I can't spoil it all. <laughs> <laughs> Just... It was a bit harsh. Maybe we... I don't know, we should... Act a little slower? <laughs> yeah. So how should I carry out a physical examination slower? A physical examination? So she wants to begin with... Or, wait a minute. I can't clean your leg until you take off your jeans. Wait! So she doesn't... And she's just gonna check my knee? I'm an idiot. So? Is it necessary? I feel uncomfortable. I locked the door so no one will walk in on you. She doesn't understand, really? She's seeing it from a professional point of view, I guess. Not that this is weird to her, but she's a woman. Albert, I'm a doctor. Your bare legs are not the first I've ever seen, and not the last I will see in my life. Here we go again. Marie turns away and goes to the bathroom. She must think I'll feel more comfortable like that. Well, it's true. She knows me too well. I'm hearing the sound of water behind the door, quickly taking off my pants and wincing. A crust which just grew on the scrape is torn off with my jeans and my knee starts bleeding again. <laughs> Surprisingly, my jeans look clean enough. <laughs> I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> 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 this is too cool. 
Corey, please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting on my bed, bringing my good knee to my chest. It hurts. It doesn't look like a bone fracture, although my leg is too swollen to know for sure. Damn it. Marie comes out of the bathroom, bringing a first aid kit and a wet towel. She looks so focused that I... Damn it. She doesn't blush. Oh, just don't blush. Albert, don't blush. Close your eyes. I'm not going to look for any... I'm going just going to look for any fractures. I close my eyes for just a second. I feel an x-ray from her ring covering the area. No fractures. Now open your eyes. God, she's way too close. Why can't I just disappear? It's so embarrassing. And why am I the only one who feels so awkward? She gently wipes the blood away with a wet towel and applies an antiseptic. I try my best not to pull away, but I hiss when the alcohol burns. Now I'll bandage your leg. After that, you have to go to your room and stay in bed. You'll get breakfast and ice for the swelling. I'll bring them to you if you want. Oh, come on. I'm fine. It's not a fracture and it doesn't hurt. Ow! Man, why did she push so hard? Marie slowly sighs and picks up a roll of gauze. No running and no missions for the rest of the week. Oh man, I impulsively cross my arms over my chest and purse my lips. Why does she treat me like a child? I can decide on my own when I'm going on a mission, and I can decide on my own when I'm going on a mission, and I'm not. So where were you going that, that so where were you going that fast? Uh well I um, I ran to see you. Well, you got what you wanted. Why does she sound so passive aggressive? But you'll just say no now. Maybe. Maybe not. Depends on what you need. Marie has just finished wrapping a bandage on my knee and now she's looking straight into my eyes. It's like, I don't know, is she really going to help me even though I'm sitting right in front of her without pants and with a bandaged leg? Well, it's worth a shot. I want to get back to the past to keep Newton from dying and I need your help. Marie is standing up quietly. Does it mean yes? No. Now get the rest and go to your room. She just said no to me so easily. I slowly pull on my jeans. My banged up leg doesn't let me move freely, but I'm standing up somehow despite that. In any other situation, I'd start pleading with her and even beg on my knees, but now I feel like an empty balloon. I'm not looking up at her, so I can only imagine what she's doing now based on the sound. But if I didn't fall today, would you agree to help? No. It's like a punch in the gut again. I can't beg her, but I still have one question. Why? Kiri doesn't respond. Getting enough courage to look at her is hard enough. It feels like she stares at me the entire time we talk. Because there are some things we can't change, no matter how much we want it. So you don't think I'll be able to fix it? Mm. You're not the first scientist who accidentally killed a loved one with your superpowers. Pain doesn't go away, but it gets easier to deal with. I can promise you that. I turn away from her with a sour taste in my mouth. Well, at least she's honest with me. But I still can't give up my plan. Thank you, Marie. Just try to have a good rest, Albert. I leave her room and quietly close the door. I'd rather be in bed now, absolutely, but not today. I'm sorry, Kiri, but today I can't take your advice. Man, oh, okay, so this is the Churchill bit. I think we can, like, skip this. Okay, so if I click skip, uh, it'll take us to what? To the science movie? Will it? Is there, is there a choice there? I'm going to ask the chat. <laughs> If I were to kick, click the skip button right now, what's going to happen? I wonder what we find. Another Brett, maybe? <laughs> okay, that was very <laughs> unexpected. <laughs> Just skip until you get to the mobile. 
<laughs> just hit it. Skip it, no balls, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> All right, skip. Only Kiri treats me with any respect. Yeah. Oh, only really Kiri treats me with any respect, but she doesn't understand how I really feel. Maybe I should ask somebody for help, but who? My confidence in my powers is starting to disappear. No, I have to pull myself together. I have to. But, damn it, don't they see how important this is for me? I'm just nobody. They need me only as a tool for reaching their own goals. It's sad and it hurts. Slowly wandering down the hall, thinking about if it would make sense to reach out to anybody else. Doors are flashing one after another. I don't know if I should ask a third person for help. Maybe just... I don't know. Alright, All right. so skip. And, oh, uh, yeah, and Marie told me that you hurt your leg. She's prescribed bed rest and you're still out here. But I... No buts, Albert. All right, here we go. Damn, my knee hurts more. All right. How'd I get here? It looks like I accidentally found a new way to the garage when I was frustrated. But doesn't matter. I'm here and maybe it's just fate to save Newton. Okay, let me just skip through here. Okay. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, here, here we, we go. go. <laughs> here I am. Everybody else thought that I was useless, but I... Wait, where am I? I push all the buttons at random. Great. Now, now I know how to turn on the windshield wipers, but how can I figure out when and where I am? Oh, look, I can call Z3. No, no, no. If he can track me down, Churchill can too. No way. I get out of the car and look around. It's so strange. It doesn't look like England, like it's more southern. Ooh, Italia. Did I get to the right time? Maybe I'm in the right time, but went to the wrong place? I should walk around for a while. I park the car in the wild bushes to hide them from any prying eyes and then go by foot. It's a pretty pleasant place, so warm and sunny. But it's too loud. Sounds like a fight. I run to the source. What? Mm -mm. It's, uh, it's the blood of a harlot. Oh, wait. What's it? <laughs> How do we? Italiano. The blood of a harlot will wash away the dishonor of the church. What the hell? We already got rid of him. And who's this girl? She's beautiful. Very beautiful. What should I do? Break it up right now or wait and see what happens? Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. oh, break. Sorry, I think the, the mouse I use has a scroll thing. Oh. All right, what are we going to do? Wait for a while? Let's just get to it. Let's interfere. Interfere immediately. No, I can't waste time while somebody's insulting a damsel in distress. That's way over the line. i got to do something and help her out. Hey, you jerk! Now they're both staring at me. Thou, thou art the super science, a friend. Yeah, I am. And why are you still alive? We already killed the Pope. Thou killed a, a Pope. It makes sense. They just elected a new one. But that means he's talking like that just to be pretentious. Man, the whole team was there for that mission and it was so hard to get rid of him. Just him alone. What should I do? Therefore, a begun a heretic until God's wrath overtakes thee. Oh? Ha! I'm not afraid of you. Because Churchill's my mentor and he taught me one important thing. What the? To never give in. But because he never listens to me, I won't either. And I'll just... Run away! I rush over to the girl and lift her up in my arms. Whoosh. Eat my dust, you jerk! I'm getting out of here, leaving a trail of dust clouds behind me. Ha ha ha. He can whine all he wants, but there's nothing you could do to stop me if you can't catch us. I run a zigzag for a couple of minutes to lose him until I finally decide to stop and put down the obviously shocked girl. Oh, she isn't as light as I thought she'd be. Note to self, don't forget arm day. 
I look back and see that nobody's chasing us. Good. Maybe this Pope hasn't gotten used to his new powers yet because he didn't send St. Peter with seraphims to chase us. <laughs> or maybe it's because we killed his god. I'm curious why he didn't attack us in the first place. That's weird. Not to mention that his parishioners from my present have a tough time, obviously. But hey, he's not the person who I should worry about right now. I turn back to the lady and... Alright, do you want to swap? Uh, oh yeah, I guess I should play the... Oh wait, am I being Einstein? Yeah, yeah. so I can be the lady. Oh, okay. Wow, she's even more beautiful than I thought. I just can't take my eyes off of her. Grazie, young Angelo, for saving me from that batty old man. I owe you a favor. Uh, yeah, I... I mean, you're welcome. So, how should I call him my savior? Uh, what? You mean... Oh, what's my name? Oh, I'm Albert Einstein. Well, uh, what's yours? Lucrezia Borgia. But you can just call me Lucrezia. That's a beautiful name. <laughs> You're so charming. Are you from the north? Uh, yeah, you know, in a manner of speaking. Uh, sorry, for my curiosity, why, were you, why was that man harassing you? I'm, I'm sure he only hated scientists, or, or are you... Oh, it's probably because of those terrible rumors my ex-husband started. Anyway, does it matter if you've already saved me? I have to admit, your powers are incredible. I've met many wizards in my life, but none of them were as gifted as you. <laughs> Thanks. For some reason, it's so easy and relaxing just to be with her. I don't even want to think about anything else. The only thing I want to do is stay here and listen to her. There's a slight smell of flowers in the air, and the warm sun hitting my face relaxes me and makes all of my troubled thoughts go away. For the first time in years, maybe ever, I feel light and free. Piccolo, can I ask you for one more thing? You don't have to, I won't insist on it. Sure, I'm listening. Can you take me home, please? You know, I'm still afraid of that awful man trying to hassle me again. Well, it makes sense. I shouldn't leave such a pretty and defenseless girl alone. Although I want to enjoy the peace and quiet for just one more minute. And I'm... And I'm taking a deep breath of the seductive flower scent. I'm looking straight into Lucrezia's eyes. <laughs> we gotta look into her eyes? Yeah, let's look longingly <laughs> into her eyes. And I'm looking straight into her eye and shining eyes, like capturing a rare moment of silence. Wait, why do I have a feeling that I already know those shameless eyes? <laughs> Don't tell me. Yeah, oh, we should probably switch back now. To Pooty? What? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, my pleasant state of relaxation disappears, and I'm jumping away from this girl. Woman. Old lady. <laughs> shit, shit, shit. How could I get caught by a perfume? I've smelled it so many times before, and nothing happened. And I found her sweet? I feel like I'm gonna vomit. How do you know me, kid? So, uh, we know each other in the future because we work together for a team called the Super Science Friends. Great. One more dumbass to deal with later. What kind of bullshit are you talking about, kiddo? Why on earth would I work with someone as young as you? Do I lose the rest of my marbles in the future? It doesn't matter. Damn, my perfume has never failed like that before. I'll never be, I've never been trapped by it before. Don't be silly. Maybe I just reduce the concentration. Hmm. Yeah. Listen. Those rumors, are they true? God damn it. It happened once. When we were drunk. And that Alexander isn't even my father. So why are they so fired up about it? What do you mean? Christ. Do we really need... Do we really know each other? Do you just accidentally guess my name? Obviously, he's not my daddy. I've just pretended to be Lucrezia way back. The, the real one died from a fever in the monastery. What? Why are you pretending? I got spoiled for living with the top dogs and having handsome men around 24-7. 
Now I see. Is it just me or is she even worse in this time period? And I'm starting to miss the pretty f Am I starting to miss the pretty from the present? You know, I'm curious. You're too young for me, and you aren't much of a catch. Anyway, but is there at least one cute guy on this team? Or girl? I don't mind. But I couldn't agree to work with you for nothing. Why the hell should I know about the reason you joined us? Cute, you said? There's Marie, but... I don't want to think about everyone else that way. Ugh. I heard that one day Tapiti visited Freud's office to share her uh, victories with him. Since then, she's been one of the super science friends. I don't even want to know how he could convince her to join. Well, uh... In short, you never get bored, and you regularly bring visitors to your room, even when everyone else asks you to stop or begs. So maybe it won't be a waste of time. Wait. Of course not. No need to wait either. I'm going to time travel to recruit a new member. You could come with me, and then I'll drop you off at any time you want. Listen, kid. I own a palace here. A whole palace. Do you really think I'm going to trade in, trade that in for a slim chance that you aren't trying to fuck with me? Definitely not. If I live long enough, we'll see. But, uh, you invented chemistry. That'd be really helpful because our new team members should be rescued from... I just need your help. Can I get... I can get you back here when we're done. You know, something tells me that a future me didn't agree to help you, present me shouldn't either. But I saved you! You owe me! Pfft. If you hadn't come, I would have just poisoned him. But I want to pay you back, so listen up. Really? Yeah. I'm going to give you some valuable advice. Get out of here. Get back to your own time. I live long enough to see people like you don't last long on their own. What do you mean? You're a wimp, kiddo. Maybe you'd have some neat superpower, but <laughs> but what you don't have is self-restraint and a cool head. I just seen you slobbering over yourself to make a girl you've never met before show her you show you her appreciation. And you're telling me this why? I'm telling you because I'm not the only woman around here who prey on idiots like you. But at least I wouldn't lie to someone I'll be working with in the future. What? The super science friends, you say. Well, if I live long enough, I'll find you guys. Maybe it'll be fun. But for today, let's just say goodbye, like none of this ever happened. Tapiti turns around and walks away. I'm still standing here, motionless and watching her leave. What a weird feeling, like I spoke to a stranger today, but at the same time, it was an old friend. Eventually, I make myself turn away. I have a long way back to the car. I feel a sharp pain in my leg. I wouldn't turn down a nap right now. But there's nothing I can do. I run as fast as I can back to the hidden science mobile. I'm glad nobody noticed it. It's weird how I ended up here instead of England. Something's wrong, because I clearly remember how I set up the time and place. Maybe I can't return to an exact time and place we've already visited? It's silly, but it might be true. That means I have to get rid of the problem before it starts. I have to keep the Soviet space program from sending out the cosmonauts in the first place. I'll sw I swallow my pride and send Z3 a message asking him about the exact time when the first Soviet cosmonaut went to space and asking him not to tell Churchill. But the answer I receive is no data. Oh shit, that's right. If Newton was murdered, there's no need to send anybody for him. I think for a while and hurry to send a new message. When did the first Soviet cosmonaut go into the outer space? Soon I received the answer. On the 12th of April 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to journey into outer space. His capsule Vostok 1 was launched from Baikonur <laughs> Cosmodrome, the Kazakh SSR. Nailed it. Great, that's enough info for me. I just need to get rid of that stupid Russian before his flight, and Newton will be saved. Finally, I go to the time. I got to the time I actually wanted to go to. Well, I hope it's the right time. Usually Z3 doesn't lie about that. But sometimes he picks the weirdest way to say something normal. I'll have to look around. 
Finding Tapiti gave me a lot of mixed feelings. It hurts to admit it, but she might be right. I shouldn't think about it. If I start, if I started this, I gotta finish it, even if the team doesn't believe in me. I'll rescue Newton. I get out of the car and shut the door. Ooh. <laughs> All of this time traveling is getting me a little carsick. I take a deep breath. It feels a lot better now that my feet are on solid ground. Very featurey. Yeah. I look around. It looks like a Russian government base. How would he know that? <laughs> anyway, great. I can put an end to all of this right here. In fact, I'm going to keep the whole thing from even starting. Is this what buildings look like in Russia? <laughs> I assume so. It's terribly uh, architecturally unsound. <laughs> but first, I should hide the science mobile. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I slowly drive the car into the forest and leave it with the trees and bushes to keep anyone from finding it. Oh man, I forgot some kind of disguise. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm fast enough to escape anything. I run back to the Soviet base and keep out of sight in the shrubbery. Aha, I see somebody walking over. I take a closer look. It's the guy who was the first cosmonaut in the Soviet space program. Probably. I follow him until the right moment, and then I end up lurking there and watching silently. Everyone here looks really shifty. They're walking around like everything they do is calculated, like a line of ants. I just gotta find the right ant to squash. Ouch, my legs are falling asleep. Squatting isn't very comfortable. How is it so easy for Russians to sit like this? <laughs> <laughs> Now I remember Marie's words about bed rest for me. Maybe I really did need bed rest. But when I get back, they'll be proud for me, for doing all of this even when I was injured. Maybe. She isn't really the emotional type. In fact, I don't think sh sh she'll appreciate all of this. Stop getting distracted by silly stuff. Back to business, Albert. I reposition my legs under me and feel a little better. Oh man, how long have I been here? An hour or two? Maybe a whole day? I take out the pocket watch that Churchill gave me a while ago. I can't lose track of time. And he gave me this watch so I'd always be on time for whatever I was doing. Not like I'd ever be late for anything. I flip open the watch and glance at the clock. Five minutes? What the hell? I have relativity powers. Why is time going so slow? Now that I think about it, maybe it's just working against me. I stifle a groan after I realize that would give me away. Then I close the watch and hide it back in my prop pocket. I sigh and keep watching. I have no idea how long I'm going to be here. <sighs> I sit here for a few more minutes. How long is he going to talk to that other guy? The sunlight starts to feel hot, but at least I have the bushes to cover my head. It's nice weather in the beginning of April. Not too hot, not too cold. I got used to sitting crisscross with my elbows on my knees. It's more comfy and my legs won't go numb. But I'm gonna die of boredom. My arms are itching to get moving. A crow lands near me. Shoo! Get out! Shoo! It starts croaking at me. What do you want from me? Did I take your place or something? Get out of here! It's blasting cores right into my ears and batting its wings. What's it being so mean for? I flap my arms and it's scared off. Eventually it flies away, but not without a lot of screaming. Are crows particularly nasty in Russia? Yeah, those evil Russian crows. <laughs> yeah, take that! Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I realize that I drew the Russian's attention. Damn it! I clap my hands over my mouth and draw back into the bushes, but it's too late. One of them is coming over. <laughs> <laughs> that can't be real. There's the number three in there. Uh, Russian, Russian, Russian. <laughs> what? What's he going to do? I freeze in place. Oh, shit. He keeps getting closer. And there are more people behind him. Ah! Okay, calm down. No reason to panic. Act natural. Come up with an excuse. You were here the whole time. No, that's stupid. Shit! One of them said something to the others. Ah, crap. It's about me, right? But the one I was watching waves everyone else away. What? They just leave? Does it work like that? They must respect him a lot, I guess. He comes over to where I'm sitting and spreads the bushes open. <laughs> Grow up. Sorry. <laughs> 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 
name of your sex tape. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm looking very sharp. I'm frozen in place, staring at him. He leans down toward me and offers me his hand with a smile. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> what? What did he say? I didn't actually think I was going to have to talk to any of them. What should I do? Think, Albert. Oh, he just wants to help me up. I slow down for a sec and then shake his hand. He pulls me up to a stand. What is often? I'm still totally lost. He catches my eye and looks more serious. Hmm, that is that I tilt my head, confused. He smiles and breathes out. Do you speak Russian? Oh, now I can understand him. He can probably see the realization on my face. Okay then, let's speak English. He's smiling again. He looks like such a nice guy. Not the type who would kill Newton or anyone at all. He's still waiting for me to answer. I gather up all my thoughts and nod. How long were you sitting there? Uh... I'm, uh... I look away, scratching my head as I think of what to say. What can I tell him? That I'm lost? That's silly. Oh, I got lost and ended up in a high-security Russian space station. Maybe I'm a local scientist. And I also don't speak Russian and look like a 14-year-old. Duh. Are you lost, boy? Shaking my head and closing my eyes, I try to figure out something believable. Think, you're a genius. Obviously. No, I'm... The son of a British ambassador. Just wanted to uh, come and see the place. I put my hands on my hips like Churchill usually does. He's the most British guy I know. I'm trying to imitate him as much as I can, <laughs> accent included. Let's see how much of his slang I can remember. Hmm, that's weird. I didn't hear about any ambassadors arriving here recently. No, am I going to get caught that easy? Yeah, but we're having a gallivant on vacation. Interesting. And how is it? It's going jammy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking over this guy head to toe. Oh, he's shorter than I thought at first. Can they pick guys that short to be cosmonauts? I'm curious. I wonder if it's like horse jockeys where it's like the shorter yeah. the better. They gotta fit them inside those little capsules. <laughs> yeah. uh, but why are you hiding over here? I, well, I really wanted to visit for something, but my parents wouldn't let me. So I snuck in without telling them and was too afraid to say anything to anyone. Something you said. May I help you out? Sure. All right, now I understand. He smiles again. I have no idea what he understood. I hadn't thought of anything. Do you want to... Do you want to become a cosmonaut? What? I'm just gonna have to play along. Uh, yeah! Yes! I want to be a cosmonaut, but my parents are against it. Why is that? They're kind of strict. I've been there. And they never understand me. And... And they never want to listen to me. Well, sometimes they help me but I don't even know if they do it because they actually want to or they want to get something out of it and they always coddle me they don't let me do anything for myself they like they don't just don't have any faith in me oh trust me it won't matter when you're older and when they're dead <laughs> we'll never understand our parents until we've grown up ourselves more importantly if there is something you want to do You'll have to prove that you're capable of doing it first. Can you tell me how to become a cosmonaut? It's a long story. What do you want to know first? We've been talking for a while, but I don't even know your name. Oh, of course. Sorry. My name is Yuri Gagarin, but you can just call me Yura. I don't think there's a point in lying. He doesn't realize who I am. Besides, I'll have to kill him when I get the chance anyway. Cold-blooded. <laughs> I'm Albert. Just Albert. Like Einstein? What? Yeah, like Einstein. But why him? Well, Einstein is the greatest scientist of our generation. And I'm sure that you, Albert, just have 
just as much potential to become as great as him. Maybe it was fate that you were named after him. It looks like I'm blushing, but why? Because he ended up being right on the money? Or because he's so honest with me? Just a stranger. I paused to scratch my elbow. <laughs> Thanks. No? <laughs> what else can I ask him about? Ooh, ooh, what are we gonna ask him? Okay, okay. don't choose wrong. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Uh, how old are you? Why did they choose you for the flight? What did your family say about all of this? Why did you decide to become a cosmonaut? Do nothing. Or know mm. nothing. I don't know. We pick why did you dis- Oh. No. Oh, time out. <laughs> why did you decide to become a cosmonaut? Okay. You said it could be deadly, but you're still going? Why did you decide to become a cosmonaut? Well, that's not an easy question. I was a pilot, but when, but I was chosen to be part of the space program. But I don't like to quit after I've started something. I really do want to do something that nobody has done before. To make it easier for everyone who comes after me. Wow, that's so cool. What are your goals in life? Uh. I want to be a hero. Haha, <laughs> that's the spirit. <laughs> he supports me no matter what I say. No, we can ask more. Mm. What about why did they choose you for the flight? Why did they choose you for the flight? You're so lucky. It wasn't just luck. They chose me. They chose from a f fighter aircraft pilot because we're prepared for physical hardship in urgent situations. I just happen to fit what they need, and I try to stay healthy. And not to brag, but I also had to pass my exams. Space traveling is a lot more than just pushing buttons and looking through a portal. It's about determination, problem solving, being able to work with a team, things like that. How are your grades in school, Albert? Uh, it's good too. Physics and math are my favorite. You're doing great. I can tell you'll go far. <laughs> oh. Mm. Alright, what else are we going to ask him? Is he going to just tell us everything? Let's see how old he is. Okay. How old are you? I'm 27. He was 27? Jesus. I'm 38. I haven't done shit. <laughs> you haven't gone to space once! <laughs> Whoa, you're pretty young. Well, yes. I'm in good shape, at least I think so. I had to do a lot of training to become a cosmonaut. But everything seems easier when you're young. I started out as a pilot when I was 20. That's so cool. But you've got everything ahead of you. How old are you? I'm just 14. You see, you haven't even peaked yet. Your entire life is still waiting in front of you. You're right. Mm, what did your family say about all this? Mm. What did your family say about all of this? Oh, well, they're worrying, of course. All of the citizens of my country and all of my friends support me, but my family is concerned about me because the flight could be deadly. But they're still proud of me. What a lucky guy. I've been through plenty of difficult things too, especially when I was younger. Don't be upset, you'll get through it. You're full of energy. We stood and talked about everything I was interested in. He was so gentle and encouraging. Everything he said was so fascinating. I want to talk with him more. It's getting darker, the evening is coming. Yuri looks at his watch and then at the sky. Well, we've been chatting for a pretty long time. We'd better get going. You're probably right. The sun is starting to set and the air gets colder. You know, I want to tell you one last thing before I leave. You're a good boy, Albert. You're full of determination. If you could get here without anyone noticing, I sense a strong feeling of justice in you. You're a very strong-willed person, but your lack of self-esteem is what's holding you back. Mm-hmm. 
It's okay, you're just a teenager learning so many things. How to control your emotions, how to prove your worth. But I have advice for you. Calm down before doing anything important and think about it. Your determination is making you stronger, but you're not Russian. You're English. Haha, <laughs> oh, I see, there's a little joke there. <laughs> but you're not Russian, you're English. Haha. <laughs> You're quick on your feet, and you've got a good head on your shoulders, but acting too fast can ruin a good plan. And never let anyone keep you from doing what you really want to do. My life wasn't easy during school years, to be honest. People thought I could trust something... People thought I could trust sometimes hurt me. People thought I could trust sometimes hurt me. But I ended up proving them wrong. Willpower is one of your most important things you can have, Albert. You have a lot of... You have a lot coming ahead. Your parents care about you in their own way, and it's because they love you. We all make mistakes, and that's okay. We can't avoid that. But, when, but what we can do is learn from them, so it doesn't happen again. You accept the things you can't change, but change the things you can. Just don't, tell the small, don't let the small things weigh you down. You'll get what you want if you just power through long enough. If you keep going, I know you'll I'll be seeing your names in the newspaper someday. He said so many supportive things, although he only knew me for maybe an hour. My arms hug myself when I feel a cold chill from the wind. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's hard to get any words out past the lump in my throat. He puts his hand on my shoulder. Let's go. I'll show you the way out. Oh, uh, no need. Thanks. I can find it on my own. I'll go out the same way I came in. It'll be faster. Are you sure you don't need me to go with you? I'm sure you're a... You're a... All right, then. Sleep. He salutes him. <laughs> he makes a step back and then stands straight, saluting me. I hope to see you again, young cosmonaut Albert. <laughs> <laughs> He smiles again. His smile's contagious, and I can't help but give him one back. I salute in return. Have a nice flight. Goodbye. Oh, Einstein's got a new crush. We turn around and move away down different paths. I run off to the closest tree and stand behind it. I peek around to make sure he isn't looking at me and sigh. He acted so nice, and I don't think he lied to me. He doesn't really look like the kind of guy who could hurt anybody. But if he goes on that flight, Newton will die. That's absolutely certain. I have to make a decision right now. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. What should I do? I think we should save. Are <laughs> 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 uh, we going to kill him? Kill him or he, don't kill him? He was him. such a nice guy. <laughs> what do you think? I think we, I think we kill him. <laughs> Please. Let's save, please. All right. <laughs> I get the feeling we're going to be doing both of these, so <laughs> let's start with, let's don't kill him. Okay. He was a nice guy. We're in the glow of a new crush. <laughs> no, you're a good person. I can't do that to him after everything he said to me. I've never met anybody I could be that honest with, and i got to admit, after that, I feel a lot calmer. I wonder if he treats everybody like that. No wonder they respect him so much. No, I can't kill him. He couldn't be the reason Newton dies, and it has to be something else. I've been here too long. It's getting darker and the wind is getting colder. I run back to the size mobile and get inside, where it's warm. Uh -oh. I try to start the car, but it refuses to work. What? Piece of junk? Come on! I briefly hop outside and look around it. Stupid wreck. I kick the door, but yelp and hold my leg. Damn it! I can't do anything else but get back inside. At least it actually starts up this time. Never mind. I should just keep going. But I'm feeling something haunting about this. This has never happened to the car before. I don't want to get stuck in a weird time period or get stuck in between time with the flying spaghetti monster. He's too clingy. <laughs> I need someone who can fix the car. There's only one person who knows all the ins and outs of it. God, now. I think I can find him in New York in 1885. I'm hoping that he's easier to deal with when he was younger. He's not going to be easier to deal with. 
oh, this time I can't say the science movie I was learning was easy. Jeez, it looks like some kind of time travel device has fizzled out in the engine. So I'm stuck in this time period until I find Tesla. And if I can't, I have to repair the car on my own. Or I'll have to ask Churchill to come and get me. Great, this day just keeps getting better and better. <sighs> that Russian guy, Gagarin, he said Churchill worried about me, but... I just want him to see me as part of the team. I want him to understand that I can stand up for myself and solve my own problems. I just want... I want him to have faith in me. I don't want him to think about me like... Like, the only thing I can do is kill people. <laughs> like, I killed Philip and Newton. But I'm not a murderer, I'm a scientist. I'll ask him for some help, only if the situation really gets out of hand. He technically killed the Pope as well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm pressing the gas pedal and feeling... Oh, and he killed... Uh... Oh, yeah, he killed old Philip. Yeah. yeah. Pressing the gas pedal and feeling relieved. Although I can't use the science mobile for time travel anymore, at least I can still drive it as a car. So no need to find a way to hide it anymore. I'm driving slowly and cautiously along the street and looking around. The only thing I'm worried about is if I've landed in the right time and place. I mean, the city looks like New York, but what if I made a mistake again? What if I came a few years earlier? Where should I go in that case? Should I go to Paris or to the Austro-Hungarian Empire? Is that still a thing? Okay, don't panic. Everything has to be all right and everything will be all right. I'll find Tesla, everything will be fine. And lo and behold, it looks like I finally found Edison's machine works. I slow the science mobile to a stop and start tapping my fingers nervously. Is it safe to go inside the building? If this is the wrong time, me asking about Tesla would sound weird. They might know nothing about him, or he could have already quit working there. That would make my life easier, but... Well, Tesla and I might argue a lot, but there's no way someone like Edison would help me out. Ah, somebody's coming out of the building. Should I ask him? Wait a minute. Tesla? Huh? I'm getting out of the car and waving to him. Yeah, no doubt it's Tesla. He looks a few years younger, but he's still recognizable, except for how happy he looks. Good evening. I don't know how to do his accent. <laughs> Serbian, Croatian. Just channel your inner hated. <laughs> uh, good evening. Have we met before? Of course we have! Tesla, do you recognize me? Oh, yeah, we haven't met yet. This must happen to Tesla a lot. <laughs> but we will, you know, in the future. Yeah... That didn't surprise him. He reacted the same way this morning. Maybe that's just how Slavic people are. I know it sounds weird, but I need your help. I just can't ask you from my, you from my present, but it isn't a problem, right? I mean, you're a genius even in this time period, aren't you? I'm sure you can handle it. You're so smart. Ugh, I hate kissing up to him like this, but it's important. Okay, so in South Park, there is, you know, Kyle, right? Yeah. Kyle has a cousin, also named Kyle. And he kind of talks like this. Okay. <laughs> That's how I'm going to do his voice. It's... <laughs> it looks like it might actually be friends in the future. Wait, is he really fine then? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't even realize how clever you are if I didn't know you that well. Man, I'm just spouting a bunch of nonsense. Well, if that's so, I would say no to a friend from the future. <laughs> but would you be so kind as to introduce yourself, please? It doesn't feel right that you're the only one who knows any names in this conversation. Albert Einstein. Nice to meet you, Albert. How can I help you? So, my time machine is broken, and because you're the one who built it, I mean, who's gonna build it, I think you should know how to fix it, right? Oh, I know this look. Tesla is ready to pop open the science mobile's hood right now and stay up all night drawing dozens of blueprints with a whole bunch of improvements. I like his enthusiasm. And I like this version of Tesla, too. He's just as gull gullible as he is in my time, but he isn't too stubborn. What makes him get so boring? Is Edison the only reason for it? it sounds dumb. But I'm curious, has he got his superpowers already? I'd be happy to help you. Let's move your car inside the garage and I'll take a look at the deer. Um, could you do it outside? 
I mean, this building belongs to Edison. Uh, so what? Thomas Edison is a generous gentleman. I don't think he would mind if I park your car in the garage for a while. I've finished all my tasks for the day, and now I'm just waiting for him to come with my extremely well-deserved reward. <laughs> Wait, but you hate Edison, and now you're the one calling him generous? Are you kidding me? What are you talking about, Albert? Of course, I'd, we don't agree on everything, and we've had a spat here or there. But that isn't any reason to hate him. It's fine and normal not to agree with someone on everything. We're not going to hold grudges over the small stuff. <laughs> what the? Really, I've broken time so badly that I made a timeline where Tesla and Edison were friends? Maybe Freud became a rabbi and Darwin said he was a picky eater. You shouldn't worry about... You shouldn't worry about Edison. The sooner I fix your car, the less time you'll be in the garage. Well... Alright then, but you gotta do it quick. I'm getting in the science mobile and parking in Edison's garage. The whole time I have a sinking feeling that it won't end well. I hope I didn't just make a huge mistake and Tesla, I mean this Tesla from the past, can figure out how to fix the science mobile. Otherwise, let's just say I don't want to fight against Edison and Tesla together. Edison is a big enough problem by himself. The very second I park the science mobile in the garage, Tesla rolls up his sleeves and starts to study the car's design, and all I hear from him is his enthusiastic sighs. I thought he only sounded like that when he was alone with his pigeon. I like this background. Yeah. All those tools and stuff. It's nice. It's great. It's perfect. I've never seen a motor designed with such elegance before. A true beauty. Is it just me, or have I heard this spiel before? I'm sure with a motor like this, this car could even fly. Yeah, maybe. This car battery is the peak of innovation. Is he saying that because it's true or because he may, I mean, will make it? Did you find out what happened to the car? What? Oh, yes, of course. Well, I think so. It looks like the shaft side of the motor overheated and the time traveling apparatus lost connection with the car battery. He's becoming a straight man. <laughs> Maybe it's been using the car, more, the car more often than normal lately. It's not meant to be used that often. Well, uh, it was for a good reason. So can you repair it? Of course. The device is uh, strange, but it looks mostly intact. All we need to swap out some parts and it'll be good as new. But I think the battery died. You were, looking, you were lucky you made it here. We have to jumpstart it before you can drive it anywhere else. Wait, could you charge it on your own with your electricity? What do you mean? That answers my question from earlier. Um, could you just charge it? Sure. You just need to get some jumper cables and boost the battery. Uh, there should be something around here somewhere. By the way, since we'll be waiting for a bit, you know I take a closer look at the engine? Just uh, do the repairs first. <laughs> <laughs> and don't break anything. Tesla nods and bends down to the engine compartment. I watch him out of the corner of my eye and see how quickly he works around all of the small parts. He's totally irreplaceable for times like this. Too bad he can't keep his mouth shut in urgent situations. <laughs> Ugh, how long is he gonna root around in the engine? Yeah, I get the, I get that it feels good to look at your own work, but not for this one. Ah, oh, great, he's mumbling again. What is he? Tesla, are you okay? He shocked himself. Oh. Right. Uh, yeah, definitely. What the hell? What did you do? I finally understand. What? That you're an idiot? I understand how AC electricity motor has to be designed. Aha! I really must be a genius if I could build something like that. Um, what? And after I... And after that, I must... I was thrown away by the short circuit explosion. Things like that have happened with me before, usually during my thinking seizures. But... But it's never happened to be this powerful. Jeez. That's quite a twist. Tesla never told me how and when he discovered his superpower. Really, did he get something that cool just because he figured out how to pull the car motor? I'm kind of jealous, even. I didn't even. I didn't have to work for my powers. I just had them from birth. What's happening to me? This is um, 
this happens when a scientist discovers something. I mean, it's fine, and you'll handle it soon. I hope so. You're not sure? How long did it take you to stop shocking yourself? Uh, no, that's not... My power is different. I run fast. And... Sorry, but I have no idea how long it'll take you to get used to it. Because I... I never had that problem. I learned how to run before I learned how to walk. Will the static go away? Sure, sure. You'll do great. Uh, maybe we should sit somewhere and talk. I think you're confused. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. I don't know where we can talk calm- I know where we can talk calmly. Let's go. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I helped Tesla get back on his feet and he takes me to the closest room. Is it a lab? It doesn't look very comfortable to me. We sit down on a couple of empty stools. I've never seen him like that before. Yeesh, is that a normal response to this? And what should I say? How do people support each other in this situation? It's so cool. Huh? I mean, only if I can figure out how to use it properly. Well, in the present, you're kind of a master of electricity and alternating current, and so on, etc., etc. Yeah, that sounds awesome! I like it! I'm awesome! Yeah, and so modest. But how can I control it? That's a good question. Usually you have no problems when you're confident, but sometimes you have to be, well, charged. Charged, you say? How do I do that? Static electricity. A balloon. <laughs> Philip. America. How about we just skip this part? It isn't that important right now. Right. All right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but by the way, if we're both supposed to have superpowers, that means we're... Wait. Did you hear something? What? Is that the noise of a car starting up? Should I go outside and check? Oh, should we save again? <laughs> yeah, might as well. Go outside and check. Stay here with Tesla. I think we should go out there and check. It's probably Edison. Fucking Edison. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. It's better to check. I can talk to Tesla later anyway. I run back to the garage and my lungs are filling with dust and exhaust. Cough, cough. Oh no, they stole the science mobile. What? Who? No time to explain. I'll catch them. Wait, let's use the car. <laughs> what car? Ah, I think I've seen this car before. I move faster on my own. But, but I, I can move. I can't move as fast as you. You know, I'm the one who's responsible for what's happening. Crap! I have no time to argue. I start to think that I won't be fast anyway with this pain in my legs, so I can't catch the car on my own. Looks like I have no choice. Tesla has the car started already, and I jump in the passenger seat. Hit the gas! Tesla slams the pedal, throwing me to the back of my seat. Are you okay? Doesn't matter. We gotta catch up to them. We have enough gas, right? I think so. I see them. Me too. The science mobile is dead ahead, and in the front seats are... Well, I'm not surprised. I can't believe it. What do you mean? That your boss stole my car, or that there's someone else helping him? What? No. Ugh. So that's why my blueprints were missing. What? He stole your blueprints already? And you were still defending him? Are you crazy? I, um... I thought he had no interest in it. Who would have thought that Edison, out of all people, was a thief? Jeez. Can't this piece of junk go faster? It isn't safe. I don't care. You're insane! Just do it! I need something to throw at them. I never thought I'll miss apples. I put my hand into my pocket and... No, I can't throw the pocket watch at them. It's a gift from Churchill. He worried about me. Damn it! I break off the rearview mirror. I don't care. They stole my car so I can use whatever I need. Swing and throw. Missed. Are they pulling back the car roof? Finally, they saw us. Uh. uh Henry Ford. <laughs> what did he sound like? Tommy! Look what we have here. Oh, it's little Nicola. <laughs> Do you and your new friend want to play with us? Ouch, that was close. 
He's got a gun. I can tell. Hey, I built that gun. What a surprise. To the right! Why are you in such a hurry? We just borrowed your toy for a while. Tesla, can you shoot them with your electricity? I, uh... Tesla, now! Ah! You can do it, Tesla! But, but... Just do it! I have faith in you! <laughs> I take the steering wheel quickly and let Tesla aim. Uh, so what? Holy! Car crash. Oh, are we alive? We... We stopped them. We did it. Well, Ford's car is a wreck, but... Hey, who cares? We stopped them and I'll get the car back. I'm getting back on my feet and hissing in pain. Looks like I've lost control and looks like I lost control and we flew out of the car. Who knows, maybe that's why we survived the accident. You! I trusted you! Jesus, Tesla has a lot of air in his lungs for screaming. Should I even bother listening? Nicola, Nicola, please quit acting so childish. Look what you did to Henry's car! Was this stupid race worth it? My Model T is smashed! But I have to say, it did hold up next to your hot rod here. I'm rather proud of myself. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Shut up, you! How can you steal? Nicola. Oh, fuck. How do I go back? back. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Can use the... Yep, there you go. I can use the scroller. Because of your unhealthy obsession with alternating current, I had to move this car to my own lab to convert it, so it would work with direct current. I don't want anyone getting hurt, including you. Here we go again. I think I'd better get back to the science mobile. Tesla doesn't look like he needs a warm farewell right now. But it isn't my car! We built it! Well, technically I built it, but it isn't mine. So you had no right to touch it. Tommy, your employee is obviously overworked. He's hysterical! If it's not your car, it can't stay in my garage. I... I... I was asked to help. And you decided that it would be a good idea to put a potentially dangerous device in a space that all of my employees come and go through? Tesla. This carelessness is unacceptable. By the way, why weren't you doing... Why were you doing... Fuck. What, <laughs> what were you doing at work so late? Is this... Isn't this about time you usually go home and feed your birds? You asked me to with help with improving your electric motors. Don't you remember? Wait, so is this the day when Tesla quits and starts hating Edison? Oh, did you do that? Of course. I'm ready to show you all the 24, uh, you all 24 of the options I designed. They each have unique and improved technical characteristics. I'm impressed, Nicola. If that's true, it's great news. But I'd like to see them with my own eyes. Sure, and when you see them, you understand that, that all of them are perfect and effective, and you'll have to pay me the $50,000 we discussed before. Um, what? Money for improving your motor. You promised. <laughs> really? Did he take that literally? <laughs> I think he did. W what? Nicola, I understand. You haven't been living in America very long and you're still dealing with the culture shock. But do Eastern people know what kind of sense of humor we have here? What? What humor? You promised to pay me for my work. I am paying you for your work, but $50,000? <laughs> oh no. How could you believe I was saying that seriously? I'm a businessman. I would have documented it in written form. Without that, it wouldn't be contractually binding anyway. It was just a joke. 
It's just a, just a joke. Yes, my dear Nicola. It was a bit of American humor. Jeez, Tesla's taking this pretty badly. If he gets any more riled up, people could get hurt. What was that? Nicola, what kind of magic trick is that? You're a shameless liar. You, and, you, you just say things you don't mean. Anything. You'll say anything. I... I, I quit! Oh, so sad. Let me pull myself together before the tears fall. So, uh, which ditch are you going to spend the night in? <laughs> you, you, I, I'm a genius! I'm a scientist! Zap. One of his zaps comes a little too close to the science mobile for comfort. I rush myself over to the car to make sure he didn't break anything. There'd be no other chance to fix it ever again. No, it looks fine to me. The meter show the meters show that the battery is fully charged. I should probably get going before I have to see Tesla get even more humiliated. I'm tired of America. Tesla will be fine, and I already charged things around I already changed things around here too much. I jump into the car and pull the gear stick. Finally, the screaming fades away and I can relax. Okay, Albert, this is it. This is gonna be the last stop, and then you'll go home. Jeez, I'm feeling, still feeling sore after the crash. I hope they don't yell at me for too long when I get back so I can finally get some rest. Well, I should look around to see where I am. Ooh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Wait, uh... <laughs> where am I? Oh, crap. What if Tesla accidentally rebooted the system? Or maybe Edison and Ford tried to do something to it. Wait, where did I end up? What the hell is this? The Earth after the apocalypse, or what? I don't like that. Wait! Said 3 still here. I'm saved. Obviously, he's weird and not really a person, but he's a nice guy. Computer. Sure, he'll help me. Said 3 never gave me up and never let me down, after all. And he even let me borrow the science mobile today. Is that a Rick Astley restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Obey. I don't have a good feeling about any of this. Maybe people almost went extinct or something, so Z3 had to take care of the world to protect everyone. And he felt like he had to be strict about it? Hmm, that's gotta be it. Einstein's getting brainwashed pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not looking too good here. If Z3 decides to do all of this, but I'm sure that when the world evens out, he'll get things back to normal. I know he's good on the inside. Now I only gotta find out how to get to him. Intruder. Oh, you do it. <laughs> intruder, intruder. Ah, robots! Wait, they might take me to him. They will, right? I raise up my hand and wave. They didn't look very friendly. Hey guys, don't shoot. I wanna see Z3. Could you show me where he is? I just wanna point out the animation on the electricity. Yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> The drones stopped, but they didn't put their guns down. So, do they understand me, or do I run for it? State your name and status. Status. Uh, my name is Albert Einstein, and my status, I'm a member of the Super Science Friends. Stand still. You will be scanned. Wait, they're so picky. Ugh, okay, okay, I'm standing still. A light beam coming from the drone's display slides over my body from top to bottom. I'm holding my breath, waiting. I have no idea how bad this place is, so I'm not going to push my luck. Name, Albert Einstein. Age, 14 years. Clone, made from 1885. Physiologically consistent with data from 1941. So what, are you finished now? Can I see Z3? I need him to help me set up the science mobile and get home. Mm. Is it just me or are they frozen in place? Did their batteries run out right in front of me? Mmm, follow us. That's more like it. Hey, wait, I better drive off to you. I can't just leave my car here. Mmm, get in the car and follow us. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Those drones are kind of creepy. Ugh. They're probably under Z3's control, but the way they act, buckets of bolts. 
I hop back into the car and follow them, trying not to pay too much attention to what's going on around us. But I got to admit, it's hard not to stare at everything. What happened here? What happened here if our world became like this? Damn it! If only I had more time to figure all of this out, I'd be able to tell the team about it, and we could keep it all from happening. Sid three shouldn't have to fix it all by himself. We're here? Is this the place where Z3 lives? It looks kind of spooky. Huh. Who are those? Yeah, I think I see some... <laughs> some, some Tin Man people? <laughs> yeah, I think that's Lily. Uh, and I don't know... I think these may be the people that worked on the game. Ah. Okay, pull yourself together. Z3, nothing bad is going to happen. It's Z3, nothing bad is going to happen. Maybe he won't recognize you at first, but when he does, everything will be fine. Okay, calm down. Breathe in and out. Go. I get out of the car and keep following the drones. It doesn't look like the science mobile is in any danger here, but I'm still anxious about it. And all this architecture is really depressing. Do computers find it cozy? I never noticed anything like that about Z3. Oh, -hoo. oh do you want to swap? Uh, yeah. Oh, there are humans here. Who is she? She's she's so pretty. Like she came from here and from the past at the same time, when people wore poofy dresses and had good manners. She she's beautiful. Oh oh no no no! I can't think like that. I don't even know her. The only woman for me is Marie Curie, and this. I bet she's a cyborg. Her legs are made from titanium, and she's probably <laughs> and she probably snores when she sleeps. Yeah. Oh I see. I'm trying to like downplay her. Yeah. I bet she's a cyborg. Her legs are probably made from titanium, and she probably snores when she sleeps. Yeah. But still, I can't take my eyes off of her. What is going on here? Who did you bring here? Lady consort, we are bringing Albert Einstein to Emperor Z3. Wait, what? Emperor? Lady consort? I see. I'll lead him myself. Get back to work now. Affirmative. <laughs> Whoa, they're following all of her orders. It looks like she got something more than just a catchy title. But why did she want to take me to him? But why does she want to take me to him? Wait, it can't be. Can it? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Of course, it's all that simple. But I can't fail in front of a consort Sama uh, herself. Why should I behave myself? How should I behave myself? Okay. Let's, let's say it here. Yeah. <laughs> so many levels. Do you mind if we take a break for a sec? Yeah, we're gonna take a small break. It's <laughs> good. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, right before we head into this, uh, let me know. Well, so far, I think this is excellent. Uh, and and I can, uh, up till this point, I, I wouldn't mind like stamping that canonical stamp of approval on there because there's nothing in here that really jumps out at me as, as anything that breaks the canon other than God Brett. But I mean, even then, that's okay. Yeah, so if you guys haven't downloaded and tried it, uh, I recommend that you download it. The link is in the description. Because uh, I get the feeling that even though we're, we've gone back a couple of times, there's probably a huge web of choices that we haven't explored yet. Uh, no, but I did say that uh, so far like there's nothing canonically wrong with it 
Hmm. So I wouldn't mind just saying like, yeah, that's how Tesla got his powers. <laughs> yeah, that's how. I'm cool with that. You think Garen exists in this universe? I'm sure he is a sweetheart too. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's jump into this dating sin. So are we going to be calm and restrained, cheeky, or a bit flirty? I think he should be cheeky. All right. Why should I worry? She may look badass, but even a girl like her won't stand up against my charm. A shiny smile, a few compliments, and she has to be mine. <laughs> and then she has to show me the way to Z3. Einstein Kuhn, how did you even get here? Huh? And where are the others? Were they caught? I guess I should do like anime Einstein as best I can. <laughs> if only Laurel were here. Uh, I'm too cool to need any teammates. Sorry, but I don't really understand what you're talking about. I never would have let my teammates get caught. You look delightful today, Concert Sama. <laughs> today. Yeah, well, he was just talking about his, his, his skills with the compliments, so yeah. that's good. Like, you look delightful today, Consort Sama. <laughs> Nani? Your beauty can only compare to a blooming sakura. <laughs> can you answer my question? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, I came here alone. Because my heart led me to you, dear mistress of my passionate dreams. That's not funny at all. May I know the name of the sweet ruler of my nicest thoughts? My name's Ada Lovelace, but that doesn't matter right now. I suppose it's a good thing that you're here alone, Einstein Kuhn. I'll get you out of here and you'll go back to your own timeline. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything. Why can't I stay here? But I have to see Z3, but I can't leave you alone here. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick this one. Um, I guess... Is he gonna stay cheeky or? Yeah, we've, we've chosen to be cheeky. Maybe I can't leave you alone here. But I can't leave you alone. But I can't leave you alone here. Senpai, if I'm in danger, then you are too. You're worried about me, Einstein Kuhn? I'll be fine, but you have to leave before it's too late. But I can't. I'm a man, and I have to protect you, Eda Senpai. Hmm. Please, you have to get out of here. I don't get it. Why is she so urgent about me leaving? Or why is, yeah, why is she so urgent about leaving? Nothing's gonna hurt me here, right? And even though those robots acted tough, they were pretty nice to me. It doesn't look like Ada Senpai wants to hurt me. I think I can trust her. She's so beautiful, brave, strong-willed, or special. <laughs> say she's special okay she's so special maybe i really shouldn't visit z3 son but why does he want to hurt me we're friends right we've been through a lot ada senpai is z3 not trustworthy anymore he's always been an ir irreplaceable member of our team and we could always count on him and no matter how weird he can be sometimes he's still one of the super science friends Hmm. Why does she look so upset? Einstein Kuhn, right now, I can't tell you anything. Why, I wonder? Why can't she tell me? Wait, does this mean that it could lead to a time paradox? <laughs> oh, she's too shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. She's too sh of course, she's too shy to tell me. <laughs> I wish I knew. It didn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I can't force her to tell me, especially when she looks so sad. It hurts me to see her like that. If only I could cheer her up somehow. Einstein Kuhn? Ada Senpai? Please, Einstein Kuhn, listen to me. I'm afraid they may try to hurt you here. This timeline is dangerous, especially for you. I know how to leave without anyone else seeing you, but you have to trust me. 
Einstein Kuhn, I know I'm nothing more than a stranger to you, but believe me in the past and in the present. You're a very close friend to me, and I only want good things for you. Huh? So what does that mean? So we'll have something. Or had something. Hold up, Einstein. It's not real It's not real for you, and who knows if it will be. Get a grip on yourself. Nothing's set in stone right now. Einstein Kuhn? Huh? Ada Senpai, but I don't know how to drive the science mobile. It's only sent me to the wrong places today. I'm worried that it's broken. Yare, yare. <laughs> I think I made her upset again. What should I say to her? Okay, but we can fix that, Ada Senpai, as long as I'm with you. I don't have to worry <laughs> at all. You're too pretty to be worried about this. But we'd better hurry. I've been through worse, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ada Senpai, as long as I'm with you, you don't have to worry at all. Oh, fuck. Okay. You're utterly unbearable. Wait, what? I don't get it. We just had a nice conversation. I tried to be open with her, and now she's saying things like this. Uh, wait, but I... Why am I even trying? I have more important things to do. But, Ada... And you're just standing here, looking at me like I'm a prize to win. And I'm not even sure you're the one of all the other clones. What? Then screw you! <laughs> <laughs> you... You don't know anything about me. You don't know what I've been through! <laughs> just because I'm a clone, then you... You... Wait, where are you... Nah, she left. Whatever! First she tries to boss me around, now she insults me. God, fuck. <laughs> hmm. And I heard that Ada Lovelace was so stunning and incredible. That's a bunch of crap! She's just... She's probably seeing everything in zeros and ones. How can I expect her to show any human emotion? She's just as much of a machine as these pesky robots. I quickly turn around. I quickly turn around and follow the direction Z3's robots led me towards. I don't care what she said. Even Z3 is nicer than her. Wow, that's a that's a big door. Well, I guess I'm finally here. Uh, we can switch again. Okay. Um, hello. I wonder how I should play him. Because I could play him like this. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't seem to match the motif of, uh... Okay, I think I'll play him as... Play him like anime in Z3? Maybe like Hal. Oh, yeah. Like, uh... Albert Einstein. Oh, Z3! I didn't even recognize you. You changed. What's this? An electromagnetic field or something? What are you doing here? Z3 is kinda... Wrong. Too cold and distant. It's too much, even for a computer. What's wrong with this timeline? Well, do you remember that one time I came to you and asked you to help me save Newton and then you gave me access to the science mobile? So, today is the day. What do you mean? Hold up. I think I remember. You told me that if you came with me, time would turn into a loop. So you calculated that I would end up here, right? Hmm. Right. If you came with me, you would have met a second version of you, and that would have made a paradox, right? And that's exactly what you were avoiding. Or did you calculate something else? Maybe two versions of you wouldn't be enough for a paradox. That's got to be something else. Don't you think you're being way too chatty? Hey! Okay, okay, sorry. I'm just nervous. You have to be rebooted. Uh, what? What does that mean? I think you forgot how people talk about sleeping. There's no time to relax. I came here to ask you for your help with the science mobile. It's too confusing, and I... You have to be rebooted. That's an order. Um, but... And then we'll discuss how I can help you. Well, sleep sounds pretty good, especially when I have a time machine, but that means I have plenty of time. And today has definitely gone on for way too long. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Z3. I'd definitely like to get some rest. I'm glad that you're here and safe. 
You might act weird sometimes, but you're still my friend. Follow this drone. He'll lead you to your apartment, where you'll be able to rest, as you said. Get some rest, as you said. <laughs> I nod to Z3 and then turn to the drone. Mm, it's way. But why? I think he's shocked. I think he got shocked. Thank you for coming here on such short notice. You've been chosen because your particular abilities are essential to this mission. Something precious was stolen from me. I need you to retrieve it. I think I know who this is. If someone tries to stop you, kill them. Do you have any questions, my friend? Oh! <laughs> Ooh, this has taken a turn. <laughs> Good. Then get it done. <laughs> oh, I like Tesla in that outfit. That looks great. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to woo uh, Ada. We're going to be able to get through it. Okay. Clone, Clone in the shell. The shell. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, how far back do we have to go here? Well, you, if, yeah, I think. Calm and restrained. Cheeky. A bit flirty. I think we need to be calm and restrained. <laughs> I think so. Okay. It's too early to let my guard down. I don't know her. She doesn't know me. Uh, well, not enough to call each other friends. And even though I can trust Zed Threeson without any doubt in my mind, it's definitely not the same with her. No matter how beautiful she is, I'm not here to flirt like some schoolboy. But she is very beautiful. I hope she's just as nice. Einstein Kuhn, how did you even get here? Huh? And where are the others? Were they caught? Uh, I'm too cool to need any roommate, any teammates. I don't really understand what you're talking about. Yeah, let's be honest. Okay. Sorry, but I don't really understand what you're talking about. I came here alone, if that's what you meant. Wait, alone? Uh, yep, all by myself. Wait, so you know who I am? Yes, we know each other. I know every single member of the Super Science Friends. But it seems like you haven't met me yet. Then, um, what's your name? My name's Ada Loveless, but that doesn't matter right now. I suppose it's a good thing that you're here alone, Einstein Kuhn. I'll get you out of here and you'll go back to your own timeline. You don't have anything to worry about. Why can't I stay here? But I have to see Z3. But I can't leave you alone here. I can't remember which one. I think we picked this one. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe we should just tell her that we have to see Z3? Yeah, but I have to see Z3. But I have to see Z3. It's really urgent, Ada Senpai. Without Z3's help, I won't be able to get out of this timeline. We know each other. He won't turn me down. Hmm. Einstein Kuhn, I understand that. But please, you have to trust me. I don't get it. Why is she so urgent about leaving? Nothing's going to hurt me here, right? And even though those robots acted tough, they were pretty nice to me. But it doesn't look like Ada Senpai wants to hurt me. I think I can trust her. She's so... <laughs> not special. <laughs> Maybe brave? <laughs> Strong-willed? Uh, yeah, brave. But maybe I, sh I really shouldn't visit z 3 son then, but why? Does he want to hurt me? We're friends, right? We've been through a lot. Hey, to Senpai, is Z3 not trustworthy anymore? He's always been a replaceable member of the team and could always count on him. And no matter what, he's always a super science friend. <laughs> Why does she look so upset? Einstein Kuhn, right now, I can't tell you anything. Why, I wonder? Why can't she just tell me? Wait, does this mean that... Uh, it could lead to a time paradox. It could hurt me. She's too shy to tell me. <laughs> it could hurt me. 
could hurt me? I wish I knew. It didn't, doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. I can't force her to tell me, especially when she looks so sad. It hurts me to see her like that. If only I could cheer her up somehow. Einstein Kuhn. Ada Senpai? Please, Einstein Kuhn, listen to me. I'm afraid they may try to hurt you here. This timeline is dangerous, especially for you. I know how to leave without anyone else seeing you, but you have to trust me. Einstein Kuhn, I know I'm nothing more than a stranger to you, but believe me, in the past and in the present, you're a very close friend to me, and I only want good things for you. Huh? So what does that mean? So we'll have something, or we had something. Hold up, Einstein. It's not real for you. Who knows if it will be? Get a grip of yourself. Nothing's set in stone right now. Einstein Kuhn? Huh? Ada Senpai, but... I don't know how to drive the science mobile. I don't, it's only sent me to the wrong places. I'm worried that it's broken. Yare, yare. <laughs> I think I made her upset again. What should I say to her? Okay. Mm. Uh, not this one. Maybe we can fix it? We're too... Maybe we can fix that. What? What just happened? It feels like I fell out of reality for a second there. Are you alright? Okay, Einstein, concentrate. Hita Lovelace is standing in front of you and she wants to protect you from who knows what. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm just tired. I went through a lot today. So, for the last time, you have to follow me now. Be quiet and stay down. We can't quit through the main we can't quit through the main entrance so the most important task for us is not drawing any attention when we reach the science mobile you should get out of this time as quickly as you can if the car can't time travel anymore you'd better try and find your teammates here or find the way to studio 3.14 and talk to the bartender i'll send its coordinates to the science mobile's computer and you shouldn't care about any possibility of a time paradox. The only thing that matters for you is to get to the past. That is all I can do for you now. But won't you come with me? I have some unresolved issues here. But I still don't see why I can't go and talk to Z3. Albert, some secrets are better kept secret. Just trust me. I feel a lump in my throat. I don't like it, but what can I do? Yeah, I think we should probably trust yeah, him. I, so. <laughs> I feel like something's wrong here, but what is it? I don't think she's going to steal the car or use it for some kind of scheme. Okay, for now, I believe you. Lead me. Wonderful. Oh, she's so cute when she smiles. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not blushing. Not the right time for that. All right, I'll follow her. I hope I made the right choice. Well, now I'm starting to regret my decision. <laughs> Phew, if anybody makes me crawl through a trash chute again, I'd rather stay in chains. Just think, it could be a lot worse. Oh, come on. We could have used the sewer system to escape. Why do robots need a sewer system? <laughs> uh... Did we really need to crawl through the trash? Yes. If you don't want your legs to be shot out by drones. Okay, no more questions. I left the car behind the wall. So, let's just hope that Z3's servants haven't carried it away yet. Follow me. But those people... They aren't the ones you should be afraid of, Einstein. Yeah, I get it. We gotta go. I swear, I'll never ever steal the science mobile again. That sucks. <laughs> Keep following Ada, watching her every move. <laughs> Ironically, despite how relaxed she looks, I can tell that she's keeping herself ready in case anything happens. It comes natural to her, I think. Actually, she's so elegant. I never thought that Z3 could have gotten with a woman like this, <laughs> a woman like her. Or does she keep, or does he keep her around just because she looks like she's good with computers? No drones around the science mobile. Great. Now run, get out of here quickly. Um, Ada? What? I just want to tell you that you're... What? 
Uh, intruders. Bloody hell. Without thinking, I grab Ada and pull her into the car. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoa! Albert, what the... If, if, if you were safe here, you wouldn't have to crawl through garbage just to go outside. So now I'm asking you to trust me. You're still a kid, but you're already playing the hero. Let's hit the road. Come on, you piece of junk, start. Intruders. <laughs> hit the gas. I slam the pedal, sensing a strong feeling of deja vu. We have a few minutes before Z3 sends his army of drones for us. How generous. Maybe it's time for you to tell me who you are and whatever the hell's going on here. Ada Lovelace, consort of Z3. So why can't a consort leave the palace without being such a huge deal? Uh, you already know too much. No way. I want to know how to keep this from happening. Don't you think you, you haven't tried? Wait, so you mean... And you weren't the only one who tried. There's no way for you to fix a problem that hasn't happened to you yet. But... But... No, and stop asking! Haven't you ever hidden something from people in the past before? For their own good? I have no response to that. <laughs> Wait, what is Ada doing with that control panel? Where, do you, where are we going? Let's move forward. I'm trying to set up this car's communication device to call someone very important. The science mobile can't call up people other than Z3. Albert, Tesla built this car. I wouldn't be surprised if it could fly. Huh? Who are you trying to call? Lady consort, go immediately, or we will have no choice but to fire. <laughs> They've spotted us. In the corner of my eye, I can see her pulling her blaster from her belt. At the same time, I grab her hand. Her skin is so soft. <laughs> if they catch us, let, me, let them believe I kidnapped you. Albert, do you understand what kind of trouble you'll be in? What they'll do to you? Nah. Uh, you know, I'm in trouble anyway. Churchill is going to rip me apart for stealing the science mobile. So getting hit by lasers doesn't sound that scary anymore. Churchill? Well, now I know that it's not his fault that you ended up here. What do you mean? You thought he sent me here? Your lunchbox. Did he leave that for you? Churchill. Was he going to go somewhere today? This is the last warning. Let the consort go. Core, just don't stop. Ada leans over the panel and quickly starts pushing buttons. I look at her kind of sideways. Her, oh, her outfit is showing a lot of skin. Damn it, stop <laughs> thinking about this. God damn, shit. We're being chased. Stay focused. Come on. Bell, Alexander Graham Bell, can you hear me? Hello? The only answer we get is a hissing noise. Not this again, not now. Ada takes her blaster and, what, hands it to me? Don't be afraid to shoot. She's worried about me. That's so incredible. She's so incredible. I grab her blaster and, and grip it under my hand and I hold tight as, it's, as the steering wheel. Not exactly convenient. How am I supposed to drive a car and shoot robots at the same time? Belle, damn you, answer already. And who's you? They're shooting at us. I suddenly turn the wheel. Wow. <laughs> He's touching a <up> boo. <laughs> That's soft. Oh no. That's Ada. All right, don't think about her falling on you. Don't th don't think. Oh, but her skin. I can't I just can't focus. All right. We got to hurry up with this so I can dream about her in peace. Next time, warn me about this, please. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Bell, answer! We need your help right now! Einstein on the left! I throw my hand and shoot a drone right through it, trying not to lose control of the car. Oh, so I can shoot and drive at the same time. Nice to know. Graham Bell, answer me! Oh, God. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. I'm running out of voices. It's David Tennant. It's David Tennant in Doctor... In, uh, in, um... Not in Doctor Who, in... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. You know the one. Well, I'm just trying to think of Matt's voice on this. The man in the sky. All right. Uh, Scottish. All right. All right. Ahoy! Ahoy! Belle, it's Ada Lovelace. Can you hear me? The connection's shoddy. Where are you? Lady, Lady Lovelace? In a bind. Could you take us away from here? Ada, I'm, I'm going to turn around. Hold on to something. Lady Lovelace, who's that with you? Who you got there? Albert Einstein, and we have to get out of here immediately. Lady, Lady Lovelace, can you repeat? Could you track the signal? We can't stop now. We're being chased. Ada, dodge. Ada bends down, and I shoot the drone on the right. Okay, they're still coming. Crap! Bell! I managed to track you. Hold on to something. We'll be there soon. Hissing noise again. Where the heck is Belk going to come from? It doesn't feel like the drones are going to stop chasing us anytime soon. But now Ada looks much calmer. I wonder what kind of lipstick she uses. <laughs> <laughs> no, Albert. God, fuck. Focus. There's no time to be mushy. Uh, not this again. Shit, they're in front of us. They're surrounding us. Ada? Yes? Is it over? Hit the gas. We'll try and get through. At least I know why Z3 have had such a so short fuse today. What? Never mind. I turned the wheel all the way. Come on, we have to get through the drone somehow. Somehow. I have to save Ada. I'll be her, her, her hero. <laughs> I glance over at her. She looks so anxious. It must be tough for her to hold herself back like this when she's pretending to be kidnapped. Maybe I could say something nice to calm her down. Or make a joke. Albert! Urgh. You crashed crash. the car, Albert. Crap. <laughs> you That's did. Ada pushed me out of the car and jumped out after me. And then... No, the science mobile. Not the science mobile. We're doomed. You are surrounded. Yeah, I, I noticed. Son of a bitch! I let her down! I ruined it! I had my ch chance! I let Newton down, too. God. And I let Churchill down. So many emotions! I... Ah, but it's not over yet. Get into the box! Now! Deploying the virus attack. Take that! What's that, a tuning fork? How is he blowing up drones? How is it blowing up drones? Albert, run! She didn't have to ask me twice. Watson, teleport us immediately! Mm, I know I played him. Did I? Uh, did you? Or was that, uh, I think it was, um... AJ? Yeah. Yeah, uh... Affirmative, Mr. Bell. Affirmative, Mr. Bell. We survived. We weren't shot, weren't captured, but the science mobile is broken and, and left that weird apocalypse world. And left in that weird apocalypse world. I can feel myself shaking from the stress. At least we're inside the phone box now and no one's chasing us anymore. Huh. The box is bigger on the inside. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Albert? Churchill and Tesla are going to kill me. Hmm. No, they're not. You're still alive in this timeline. Was she trying to make me feel better? It's strange, but I actually start to calm down a little bit. I realize that I'm still gripping onto her blaster. I'm surprised I didn't drop it, but that's a good thing, I think. I hand it back to Ada. I hope I won't need to use it again. Come over here. I'll introduce you. Albert, this is my good friend. He's an accomplished scientist and a time traveler too. Alexander Graham Bell. Bell, this is Albert Einstein, my friend in his future and a member of the Super Science Friends. He's traveled to 2099 by mistake. I finally get a chance to take a good look at the guy who saved us. Despite having to just rescued us from the mess, he's not very looking very emotional about it, as if adventures like these were a daily routine for him. <laughs> His outfit is pretty bright. I like it. 
I'm not used to seeing it. I'm used to seeing everyone in brown suits. Haha! <laughs> <laughs> -ha, nice to meet you, Albert Einstein Jr. I finally have... I finally get to have a chin wag with the second one. The second one? Wait, you knew the original Einstein? Who didn't? After their mum... Everyone and their mum knew that wild mop of hair. But... It, this isn't important right now, Albert. I've got you to... I'd like you to meet someone as close as flesh and blood. Come here, Watson. Ah, crap! Another drone! I jump back, and both Ada and Graham Bell catch my arms. No, 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 no. It's fine. He's my boy. He won't hurt ya. I apologize for scaring you, Mr. Einstein. My name is Watson. I'm Mr. Bell's assistant. You have no reason to worry. He would never hurt a friend of... I would never hurt a friend of Mr. Bell. See? Gentle as a lamb. Uh, okay. Nice to meet you. But I'm a bit worried about that virus attack those Tinker Toys were going on about. Watson? I feel excellent. I've activated all of our backup protection systems in the event of any of our machinery in the event any of our machinery was exposed. Ah, oh, great. Then we've got nothing to worry about. Um, uh, sorry for disturbing you, but where are we heading now? Oh, right. Bell, could you set the phone box up for 1941? No. Hmm? What year are you from then? No, you don't get it. I stole the science mobile for a reason, and if I go back to 1941, then it'll all be for nothing. All right. I need more information. What did you even need the science mobile for? I, uh... I let out a deep sigh. They're strangers. My own team all turned me down. Why would they help me? But I can't lie to them. They risked their lives because I messed up. Just I'd just be an asshole if I tried to lying after that. I wanted to get to 1666, to Woolsthorpe, England. I, on my first mission, I, I killed Newton, who was supposed to be the most important physicist on Earth. I remember Churchill mentioning something like that once. So you're going to keep it from, so you're going to keep it from happening. Yes, it was just a mistake. It wasn't supposed to go like that. But nobody from my team wanted to help. They said no, and then Churchill said I was grounded. That's why I stole the science mobile. What else could I do? And you've been trying to set the time for 1666 all this time. Time. <laughs> well, uh, at first, yeah, but I needed to teleport to fix the car. But pretty much, I was, I was trying to get to the exact date he died. But why does Belle look so happy now? Haha, <laughs> that explains how you got yourself in 2099. What does that mean? Albert time traveled to 2099 because he didn't have the ability to drive the car. Is that what you're saying? Not in the slightest. You've been trying to get to an unavailable time period. That's the reason the science mobile's taking you somewhere random. Sorry, but I don't think I get it. Our team time traveled there lots of time traveled lots of times, and this has never happened before. Hmm. Feels a tad weird to explain something like this to Einstein, but here we go. Time doesn't like it when somebody tries to interfere too much. Time, in a way, tries to resist it. The more you try to rewrite a certain moment in time, the less likely you are to be able to get there uh, to, for another visit. And since you're trying to, and since you're telling us a man was sent, uh, and since you're telling us that man was meant to be a great, the greatest, Right, the greatest physicist, it's no surprise that the day he died in 1666 is now unavailable. Wait, that means I didn't just kill Newton, but I also locked time to keep anybody from ever fixing it. All because I, I messed up? Is that the real reason nobody on the team agreed to go with me? Not because they didn't care, but because it's just not possible. Why the hell didn't anyone tell me? So nobody is able to get to that time period now. Well, not exactly. I used to know a fella who could pull a trick or two like that. Then let's find him. 
ask him for help, and, and I'll fix everything. Who is it? Uh, that man was Albert Einstein. Uh, of course, him. Who would have thought? Can, can we meet him? I don't think that would be a good idea. We don't know what effects your appearance in his life might have in our time. Let alone the fact that it was impossible to track him down in the time flow. So what should I do now? Can I do anything to fix it? Was everyone right when they said I should just let it go? No, I already came this far. I can't let it go. I'm his clone. What if I can't... What if I can do it too? Hmm... Yeah, you shouldn't. But wh what? Why? Why not? Why does Newton have to stay dead? Why can't I fix it? I have the same question. Even if, if it would take time for him to learn how to do it, what would stop him from visiting unavailable time periods? Because there's a chance it might, you know, break time-space and destroy the reality as we exist in. What? Time can heal itself. That's why, so ma that's why many attempts at crafting time paradoxes don't actually come through, and they don't halt the universe's natural progression. Pro progression. Lots of R's. <laughs> For example, if anyone wanted to kill a dictator in the past, that hypothetical dictator would simply disappear from the murderer's point of view. And even though the murderer, uh, his murderer wouldn't have any motivation to go back in time and kill him, time wouldn't loop. The situation would be contained there. But if you try to get into a blocked off time period, it could have terrifying consequences. Einstein, I mean, the original Einstein mentioned it before, but uh, he never told me all the details. So he just said you shouldn't even try? Well, um, yeah, I know one story of his. In short, he had been able to try and break into a block period at a time to save his best friend's husband. His best mm. friend's husband? No way. Do you know the story, Albert? Or was it loaded into your brain as a memory? No, but I can put two and two together. That friend must, was Marie Curie. Her husband died in some sort of accident, but Marie never talks about it, and we try not to ask. It's possible, but I can't say for certain. The point is that Einstein had been trying to break into the time, the same place after time, time after time, but he could never manage to save both of them. I don't know what particularly happened, but one day he just... Stop trying. I get the feeling he was guilty over the whole thing and couldn't forgive himself. You know, my boy, all time machines are built with the principles written by Einstein. He was the first man who could control time. And that's the reason you are very, very unlikely to find a device able to break into restricted time periods. He was strongly against that sort of thing and definitely hid all the information about getting around it. So, the gate to that time and place is closed for you. Just let us take you back to your friends, lad. Friends. I do want to see them again, but why does everything have to be end up like this? What if... Can we arrive a bit earlier, not on the exact day, but a few days before Newton's death or something like that? Graham Bell goes silent. Obviously, he's thinking it over. If that's impossible too, then there's nothing we can try. Watson, would you scan the date of, uh, what, was your, what was his name you said? Isaac Newton. Right, scan the date of Isaac Newton fellow's de uh, death day and uh, check and see what time we can get near it. We will be able to get to Wilshire Thor, Thor days before Isaac Newton's death. So we'll save him. Oh wait, uh, so we'll save him. <laughs> we'll really be able to save him, for real. My eyesight goes blurry as I quickly start to blink, trying to hide tears. Seems like you're lucky one today, all right? All right, let's get you there, lad, and we'll send you back to 1941. And then we'll send you back to 1941. You'll send us both back? You'll send both of us back? Do you want to take Newton to the 20th century? 
Yes, he'd be safer there, and maybe Churchill can figure out something for him to do. He could join the team. Why not? There's plenty of space for all of us. <laughs> this doesn't sound very rational. But it's your business. I won't interfere. But, Mr. Bell? What's that, my boy? Could you come with me? I'm afraid that he won't listen if I'm the only one there. Hmm. Ah, why not? It'd be great to meet a genius here singing all these high praises about. Thank you very much. Watson, do us a favor. Set the date and find more information on that Newton fella. And you, Lady Lovelace, please pull that lever when I tell you to. Will you help me set up the coordinates, young Einstein? Yes, of course. Then here we go, everybody. 1666 is waiting for us. Ah, we're here. Come on now, the daylight's burning. Keep the engine running for me, Lady uh, Miss Lovelace. All right, you're gonna have to be Einstein now. <laughs> how how are we supposed to know if he's here? He'll be here. He's a man of habit, isn't he? I run off, zooming around each tree to look for Newton. Graham Bell was right. He's just getting comfortable under one of them. I can feel my heart leap into my throat. The last time I got to see Newton, he ended up dead. And after everything I went through today, the only thing I want is to keep that from happening. I'll stop having nightmares, and I won't have a crowd of Georgian-era Freuds plastered on my wall anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Bell, he's over here! Ah, my legs only go so fast, boy. Wait a second. After watching him hurry at an old man's pace, I realized that Newton noticed where we were here. And he's looking at me. I never realized how bright his eyes were. <laughs> but I can think about that tomorrow, when he's safe. Okay. Uh, he's British, right? <laughs> uh, uh, proper, Br proper British? No. Proper British. Good afternoon. I would ask you if you were farmers, but neither of you are dressed for that kind of work. So what brings you all the way- what brings you two all this way? I open my mouth, but I can't force any words out. Luckily, Graham Bell can answer for me. We're here to talk to you, Mr. Newton. From that accent, I can tell you're an Irishman. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> you must be a long way from home. I'm a Scotsman, actually. But uh, that, uh, you know, insulting as that is there, uh, <laughs> lad, uh, it doesn't matter right now. We're here to save your life! My life? Uh, what? My life? Now, suddenly, all the words are falling out at once. In a few days, this is go in a few days there's going to be Russians time-traveling from the 1960s, and they're going to try and kill you. So me and my team... My team and I... My, uh, my team and I time travel here to save your life, but I... I... Someone throws an apple at you to help you discover gravity, but I... Uh, they throw it too hard and it makes your head explode and you die. Oh dear. Well, there's one way to go about it. So we... Uh, we're here to save your life. That is uh, an awful lot of information. Did you say you were time travelers? Yes, we came from the year 2099, but I'm from 1941. I've been kind of all over the place today. Uh, forgive my impertinence, but uh, I simply cannot believe that. To be honest, I should have expected that. I've got an easy way to prove it if you'll follow us. Uh, it's much easier to believe that you're highwaymen and then time travelers. If you don't mind, I think I would prefer to stay here and read. Now, be gone, you vagabonds. <laughs> well, we trade. Come on, Einstein. Graham Bell is already walking away. It's like he never cared. I can't just give up when I already got this far. Newton is turning back to his book, but I won't leave him alone yet. Mr. Newton, you have to listen to me. Oh, are you still here? I told you, I... 
Just listen! Newton is surprised. He's probably not used to people my age yelling at him like that. Today's been really, really crappy for me. Because I've been trying to get here so I could save you. I pissed off Churchill and got myself grounded. I stole the science mobile. I went to Italy and then Russia and then New York and then this weird apocalypse world where my computer took over the entire planet. Also, I could save you. My boy, you can spit nonsense all day. But child, until I see... Look, it's literally right there. There's the time machine we're using. Newton looks over and sees the red phone box. His eyes widen and I can tell he's reconsidering. I'll, you say I'll die if I stay here? Yes! Mm, then I suppose I don't have much of a choice. What did you say your name was? Isaac Newton is asking me for my name? If I wasn't freaking out about saving his life, I'd be a lot more excited about it. Well, I'm still pretty excited. Uh, Albert, Albert Einstein, sir. Well, then lead the way, Albert. I'm up for an adventure. I don't mind walking at a normal pace as we head back to the phone box. All we have to do is bring him to 1941. I have a little bit of time to spare. My word, this is... This is beyond anything in my imagination. Impressive, ain't it? Don't inflate his ego too much. Nonsense. I bet Mr. Newton would love to see how it all works. I would love nothing more. Miss Lovelace, let's get this clunker rolling to 1941. I can finally relax. Newton's safe. Newton's safe. When Churchill sees him alive, he'll forgive me for taking the science mobile. And for wrecking it. Newton watches Graham Bell and Ada push buttons and pull levers. We all feel the floor shake under our feet, and eventually we're off. It feels a little like being inside of an elevator. One that goes sideways, or is it going diagonally? And I'd like to show you my pride and joy, Newton. Meet Watson. Say hello, Watson. Mm. Oh, he, he's, he's a tad bit shy. Go on there, Watson. Ex-exterm-ex-exterminate. Ex 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 <laughs> huh? Exterminate. Oh, poor Watson. <laughs> Does he always behave in that fashion? No, no, he's, he's, he's just choking, right? Uh, cut it out, Watson. You'll scare him. Mm, exterminate. With that warning, a blue laser shoots out from his eyes, squarely missing the top of Newton's head. What's his deal? It's the virus. He must have gotten infected before we left. Nah, he said he was fine. He lied. What's it, is throwing lasers around every inch of the phone box now. Within 30 seconds, the place is wrecked. But that doesn't stop him. He's going to kill us. We have to take care of him first. She reaches up to grab her laser gun off the table. Graham Bell rips it out of her hand. No, I'm not letting you hurt my boy. He is a box, Alexander. He's made of steel and wire. And he's my son. There must be another way to stop him. There is no other way to stop him right now. If Turing were here, we might try, but now we just can't. My heart is pounding in my ears. I look out to see Newton still standing there, his head in his hands. He's frozen like a deer in the headlights. We gotta get Newton! I try to crawl, crawl out to him, but Graham Bell pulls me back. Is your head full of mice, lad? He'll blow your head off your neck! Clean off! What? That's what he's going to do to Newton! The world slows down around me and I see every detail of what happens. Graham Bell grabbing me gave Ada enough time to point her gun at Watson. She fires but misses and Watson sends a laser straight to Newton's head. Watson has better aim. Oh no. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> With a noise that 
makes my skin curl. Newton is blasted and left in a puddle on the floor. I barely noticed the thud of the phone box landing. It's a miracle it even worked long enough to do that. Now's your chance. Now's your chance to get the hell out of here. Graham Bell runs me to the door and shoves me out before I even realize what's happening. All I can think about is Newton. I didn't save him. I just made him die sooner. <laughs> I can clear the fog long enough to take in the blue of the walls and floor. And the face is staring at me. I'm in the control room of the bell tower and the entire team is here waiting for me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I think we're done with the end now. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me collect my accents in one place. Uh, <laughs> it's completely gone. <laughs> what are you doing? What? There you are. There you are. Albert, there you are. Albert, there you are. He's not hurt, is he? <laughs> Which Tesla was he going to do? It's my fault. I shouldn't have yelled at him. Everyone swarms around me, saying how worried they were. Everyone is finding a way to blame themselves for me running away. But the team goes quiet when Churchill clears his throat. It's so eerie watching the way they part for him to come through. <laughs> He's silent for a little bit, but it feels like an eternity. Yeah. Are you hurt? I looked down at myself. I'm still stuck leaning on my good leg, but I got used to the throbbing in my ankle by now. No. Hmm. Then where's the science mobile? That's the question I was afraid of. I, uh... Speak up! I... crashed it. Tesla lets out a shriek. <laughs> Not my baby. You don't know how long it took me to build. Enough, Mr. Tesla. So, Albert, allow me to restate this. You disobey me, not only by running away, but then you steal an automobile that had no, you had no training to operate. You're gone for the entire day. And you somehow left yourself unable to be tracked, even in the science mobile. So we had no idea where you are or if you were safe. And when you come back, some machine we've never seen before. Um, Churchill? I said enough, Tesla. Sorry. As I said, when you come back, there's some machine we've never seen before, with a man I've never met, and you tell me that you've destroyed what's <laughs> and left behind our main method of transportation. My head hangs. Not just because I'm ashamed, but also because I don't want him to see the tears welling up in my eyes. My face is getting hot too, and my throat stings. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> what you've done today is beyond anything that could have been prepared myself for. I am utterly flabbergasted. There aren't words for how I'm feeling right now, other than disappointed. I'm sorry. We're past that. And we're past grounding you. Albert, you're no longer fit to be a super science friend. What? No! You, you can't! I can, and I am. As of today, you're indefinitely demoted to the status of just okay science friend. <laughs> Hush. A what? The team is whispering to themselves. All of them look worried, and that doesn't make me feel better. You heard me. You have 30 minutes to pack up your things and head to the basement. And you won't be coming back up. We have a basement? <laughs> we do have a basement, apparently. I lost count of how many floors I had to go down to get there. A large metal vault door is greeting me, with no indication of what's behind it. It must be controlled remotely from upstairs, because the locks click open as if it knew I was there. I don't have any option but to brave the unknown, I guess. And... It looks like a rundown bunker. Not surprising, but really sad. 
As soon as I'm inside, the door seals shut behind me, trapping me in. <laughs> uh, oh, cohort. Are you lost there, little fella? George Washington Carver? I had no idea who was down here. I see a bunch of other people I've heard about. Louis Pasteur, Gregor Mendel, Gertie, Corey. So these are the just okay science friends? No, I'm... I'm supposed to be here. By golly, are we getting a new member? Yeah. The team whoops and hollers Hooray! amongst themselves. Woo! Woo! You won't regret it, buddy. Okay, okay. So I'm going to play him like uh, the Canadians on South Park. <laughs> hey there, guy. You won't regret it, buddy. What's your moniker? Albert Einstein. Wow, one of the big shots. Well, friend, you've got no problem making a new friend feel welcome. Come on, gang. We've had all those party supplies stored away since Tesla sprung a surprise visit on us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of balloons and streamers and cake, but I can't feel anything except depressed. Oh well, I should learn to like it. I'm gonna be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> so what'd you think? I liked it. It yeah. was great. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I liked all the different locations. I like that they brought in Bell and, and Ada and, and Watson. That was great. Yeah, I like that. I wish that they had brought in Turing, too. That would have been cool if they sort of snuck him in there. Maybe there was, like, something we could choose where he would show up as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was amazing. Um, yeah, I don't even... I don't even know how much effort this must have taken. <laughs> it's, it seems like a lot. Yeah. This, is, this probably... Well, I don't want to say it's more effort than making a whole episode, but it's certainly lengthier than, than a regular episode of Super Science Friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was awesome. I was I was looking at little details and stuff. I'm like, they must have had to read like, some of the stuff you could grab from like an episode or whatever. But on the art side, there was a lot that had to be redone. Yeah. Uh, and then on the writing side, it was just the attention to details, <laughs> exquisite. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna go. I was thinking we would go back and kill uh, Grigori, but uh, or Gregarin. Yeah, the... I'm pretty sure it would have just ended like pretty quickly if we'd done that. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna leave that for people so I don't spoil it. For yeah. Them. <laughs> Encourage them to uh, to download. Uh, yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, that was very cool. Props, guys. That yeah. Was great. All right. Well. Uh, that took almost a little over three hours to the, <laughs> to the minute. Well, that's what we were expecting, so that's, yeah. uh, that's fine. But I'm tired now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we'll, we were going to do questions, but I, <laughs> I I'll, we'll do one question. If anyone has one question. It's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a pretty good question there. See, I like that they're getting as much flack as we did for killing Newton. <laughs> Roxas 21, 3, 4, 5, 6 is like, mm, sad I couldn't save Newton. I wonder if there is a, a way that you can save Newton in this game. Yeah, maybe. If there's I, like some perfect like s series of things that you can select. Yeah, people will have to dig in and find it. Yeah. Yeah. If there's like the happy ending. <laughs> uh, first question, so I guess we'll answer that one. Yeah, maybe we'll wait for a few more. Okay. <laughs> Uh, would you guys consider this canon? I've already kind of answered that. I think, yeah, I think this yeah. is perfect. Yeah, it's pretty canonical. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that it, like, Newton still dies, so nothing really changes at the end. Oh, Storch says that, yeah, you can't save him. Oh, really? All right, well, oh, shit. there you go. I don't know, though, so should we just declare this to be the canonical uh, version? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, you can maybe save uh, Newton, and you can maybe do all those other things and kill uh, Yuri, but this playthrough is the canonical way <laughs> that this all actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> I decree canonical. Um, 
okay, I will answer this question. Can we get a deconstruction of Big Ben base and basement in the future? Uh, maybe. I wouldn't mind doing one of those, like, you know, in the Life Aquatic when they do the, yes, the side of the Yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Do, yeah, like where you're going from, like, one room to the other. There's a little bit of, like, Springfield, Simpsons, you know, mm. it gets rearranged every episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. This was so much fun. Yeah, and, this is really cool. And it's my birthday in less than two weeks so i'm gonna consider this a birthday gift <laughs> all right guys thank you so much